Right, so I gave you some rock busters. Here's the answers in case you've been, you know, struggling. So the first one was about a woman who was on holiday. She was having a lovely time in the busy part of Mallorca. She got mugged. The initials were RP. So you break it down. What's the busy part of Mallorca? It's a city, Palma. She got robbed. She was a woman. I said, what, what's happened there? They robbed her in Palma. Robber in Palma. Robert Palmer. Robert Palmer is the answer to that one. All right, well done if you got it. And a few of you did. I'm just doing this so you understand how I got to the answer. Right, second one. Uh, the steps that you use to get into a field, you know, when you go from field to field, you have those little, like little steps and they were covered in fur and pubes and that. Uh, and I said, oh, what are them then? What's, what's gone on there? The initials were HS. They were covered in pubes and fur. What is that? That's hair, isn't it? It's hair. The step that you use to get into a field is a style. They were very, they were very hairy, hairy style, right? Hairy styles, hairy style, Harry, Harry styles. That's what we've got there. And then the last one, um, this was a tricky one. The old cheap supermarket. There's some nutter walking around using a toilet as a hat. So he used a loo as a cap, a loo cap, a, a loo, Lewis, a Lewis cap in Aldi. The supermarket, Lou, Lewis cap Aldi, Lewis cap Aldi, Lewis cap Aldi. Well done. If you got those three, it's a hard one that. Uh, but yeah, well done. Um, like I say, no prizes and that, but killed a bit of time, didn't it? Look after yourself, wash your hands. All right, see ya. All right, how's it going? Uh, seeing as a lot of people are staying indoors, a bit fed up, don't know what to do. Got to keep yourself busy, got to keep your brain active or it turns to mush, doesn't it? So I thought I'd bring back Rockbusters. All right. Anyone who used to listen to the radio show about 20 odd years ago might remember it. Um, it's where I give a cryptic clue and, a, and some initials to a band or an artist and you have to work out who that band or artist is from the cryptic clue. Um, so yeah, uh, something to do, isn't it? So the first one, um, the clue is um, there's a there's a woman wandering about in the busy part of Mallorca, and she gets mugged. What has happened there? What did someone do? Did someone do to her? Right? The initials RP. She was on holiday having a lovely time in the busy part, like uh, not, not far from the airport. And um, yeah, she got mugged. What did someone do to her? RP. Right? That's the first one. Second one. Um, do you know those? steps that they have in fields to get over into the next field there were some of them but they were like covered in fur pubes and that pretty dangerous to use quite slippy who's the band or artist HS HS those those steps you get in a field to get you into another field covered in pubes and fur and that uh, what's going on there HS easy one that and uh, the last one um, there's some lunatic in a reasonably priced supermarket who's wearing a toilet for a hat 
right? Bit of a loon, walking about a supermarket, very cheap supermarket, um, wearing a toilet for a hat. What's he doing there? That's LC, LC, right? Something to do, you might you might not be asked, you, you don't want to play, it doesn't matter. If, you've, if you know any of the answers, pop them in the, uh, in the comments below. See how you get on. Uh, there you go, Rockbusters back for 2020. All right, good luck with that. There's no prizes or anything, uh, just something to do. Right, so yeah. Just before all this lockdown kicked off, um, yeah, I saw him on, I think it was like the 10th of March or 11th of March or something. And then uh, here we are, five and a half weeks on. I haven't really left the house since, but it was good. Um, he's in his seventies now, and yet he still uh, he still sounds as good as he did back then. Anna's smart. He's always he's always been one of them blokes who's been able to um, <clears throat> wear a suit. You know what I mean? And he doesn't look awkward in it. Oh, which is something I've never been able to do. I just can't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens to me. But I, do you know, like when you balance something on a cat, and it doesn't like it. It no, you know, you just put like a little bit of a shoelace on its head or something. It holds itself odd and it do doesn't quite understand what's going on. I'm like that when I wear a suit. I just feel I just I just hold myself oddly. But uh, and it's funny actually because Suzanne's been talking to an old mate of hers who she went to um, uni with. That's what's that's what that's, that's what's been going on on it really during this lockdown. People coming out of the woodwork and getting in touch with you and that. I suppose it's a good thing, but I suppose people have more time on their hands to catch up with people when normally they're busy and all that. But the last time Suzanne saw her, I think, was at a wedding, like, 17 years ago. And a memory of me at that wedding is um, I was the only bloke wearing combat pants to a wedding. So I've, I've, I've never been able to wear a suit. I'd rather look odd and stand out wearing something comfortable than trying to fit in and not being comfortable. It's pointless. Um, so I thought I'd just uh, play a couple of songs. Also give you a couple of rock busters. Because it's something to uh, kill a bit of time. I did I did some a couple of weeks ago. You like them. So so here we go. If you remember rock busters, I'll give you some um, initials and a cryptic clue. You let me know who the artist is from the clue that I give you. You don't win anything. It's just it's just a bit of fun. So the first one, the initials are AG. That's AG. And the clue is, how would you describe Kermit? Right? I mean, you might describe Kermit in loads of different ways. But what's one of the ways... You might describe Kermit to someone, you know, out of the Muppet Show. So the initials A G there, right? Uh, the second one, uh, the initial is M, and uh, of the artist of the band. And the clue is, I might phone you, I might not. All right, I might phone you, I might not. All right, and then the last one. Initials DL, DL, and the cryptic clue is the the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people who's um, you know who's got that disease whose arms and legs fall off, right? Who is it? The band of the artist, the initials DL, and the cryptic clue is. Uh, the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people with the disease whose arms and legs fall off. All right, there's a bit of working out for you to do there. Kill a bit of time, and um, and I thought I'd play this. Um, it's been stuck in my head. I've been whistling it for a few days, driving uh, Suzanne up the wall. It's Judy Teen by Steve Arley. Good one. 
the spiders from Mars. Um, don't know why they've got to be from Mars. I can't imagine spiders from Mars being any more weirder than um, spiders from Earth, to be honest. They're just odd, aren't they? How do you make them weirder? Um, I've been I've been going to YouTube a lot during the um, the lockdown, and there's two things I go to if I'm not actually looking for anything, you know, in particular. Um, there's big waves, right? You know, you you, you get like uh, fishermen. Or those blokes who are shifting freight out in the North Sea. And they do videos of the waves that are outside during bad weather. And it's mental. It's like 50 foot waves. And they're just... Um, it just doesn't bother them at all. You can hear them chatting to each other. Arguing over a game of cards. Meanwhile outside there's waves. Like you know the end of that film Deep Impact. And it just doesn't bother them. Yeah, it, it sort of it freaks me. It freaks me well out to know that waves are that big and are bashing about on the same planet that I'm sat on. So there's that um, I like looking at and spiders, and they sort of terrify me. But at the same time, I like looking at them. And I think the thing that freaks me out is the legs, because sometimes a spider can be quite big. You know, the body. But I can I can pick things up like beetles and stuff like that that have the same size body, but it's them legs, just big. It's the big legs that, fr which is weird, because, you know, one of the things that can make a woman sort of attractive is long legs, and it doesn't don't freak you out. Um, I knew maybe it would if a woman had eight legs. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it wouldn't be. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Just just Google um, the Goliath spider, will you? Look at the size of that. There's one on the internet. Just uh, I think it's the first image that comes up. It's sat in a frisbee, and its feet are hanging over the edge. It's got kneecaps. Uh, have a look at it. I mean, obviously, don't if you if you're one of them people who uh, doesn't like spiders and you can't even look at them, then don't. But it is mental. Um. Right, the other day I did some rock busters. I thought I'd just um, give you the answers. The first one, the initials were AG. The clue was, how would you... Uh, what did I say? I said, I said, uh, what's one of the ways you'd describe Kermit, right? How does Kermit look? He's, he's green, isn't he? He's all green. Kermit's all green. All green. Al green. Al green is the answer. Um, like I say, it's a little bit cryptic. You have to you have to think about it. Um, so well done if you got that one. Second one, the initial was M. The clue was, I might phone you, I might not. So what's going on there? What's another word for, for calling someone? Bell you, right? You might bell someone. I might bell you later. So if you might phone them, you might not. You may, you may bell them. Mabel, Maybell, Mabel. That's Mabel, um, who's out at the minute. It's Nina Cherry's kid, that, isn't it? That's when you know you're getting old, isn't it? When pop stars you listen to as a kid have had kids and they're, they're now pop stars. Madness. So, yeah, Mabel for the second one. And then the last one was DL. Uh, the clue was the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people whose um, arms and legs fall off. So what are they called? They're called uh, lepers, aren't they? Lepers. If you're Australian, you'd probably say lipper. So the impressionist has asked the person to do uh, do one of them people, so they're asking them to, to do a lipper. Do a lepper. Do a lipper. A few of you got that. No problems. Uh, so well done. Something to do, on it? And um might do some more, especially if this lockdown carries on. So uh, well done. Time for another tune. I thought I'd play this. It's quite apt for what's going on. Bit of John Lennon, a song called Isolation.
people are dying all the time and you know there's only so many places you can die so I suppose it's going to happen now and again isn't it anyway how's it going uh, lockdowns still sort of on isn't it when you can nip out a bit of a wonder but it's not normal yet is it so that's why I thought I'd still play you a couple of tunes and have a quick chat not doing rock busters today um, having a break from that but uh, I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook suddenly got like a load of messages coming in at the same time about one topic and when that happens you sort of go this 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 is it like Richard Branson that's what he says he said he gets loads of posts loads of phone calls and he hasn't got time to go through them all so he waits until the message gets to him or something it's like if it's important you'll eventually find out anyway I can't I can't look at every message you get on Facebook but suddenly there was the same message from loads of different people. So I thought, right, this this must be important. What is it? And I clicked on it and it was a bit of monkey news. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. I'll play it here so you can see it. It's this. This little monkey comes round the corner on a motorbike. He grabs the kid, runs off. And everybody was like going, this is terrible. What is going on? There's a monkey kidnapping a kid. But I don't know if I can turn the audio up so you can hear it. But if you hear it when it first comes round the corner, to me that sounds like a siren. And I'm wondering, I don't know where this is, it's sort of Asia or something like that. I'm wondering if this is how they're dealing with the lockdown. Like I say, if you play it back from the beginning, right? You're hearing a siren there. That bike's got some sort of siren on it, like... And that bike is a proper little motorbike, that. A monkey-sized motorbike. So I'm wondering whether in Asia, to deal with the amount of people ignoring lockdown, they've got monkeys doing the doing the rounds and making sure people stay in. And I think that's what's gone on here. He's come tearing around that corner there, down this alleyway, and he's found this family who should be at home, should be behind doors, and they're not, they're fanning about in an alleyway. And the way he's, ang I mean, the, the way he comes tearing down, it's like he's caught these before. He's annoyed with them, he's livid. I mean, he's, he's probably gone for the kid, because he knows that if he texts the kid, the adults will follow. Um, the way he just, like, gets off his bike again, like, how many times have I told you? I mean, a little motorbike's a, a, a giveaway. That's a monkey-sized moped that, that it's been issued with. Little monkey law enforcers. I suppose it's good because you're not going to argue with it because it can't speak English or wherever this is. So it's just going to go in and try and do the job, shift the people. And I think that's what's uh, I think that's, that's what's gone on here. Um, but you see, I see things like that and I think, hang on, is that starting to creep in here as well? Because all this talk about loads of PPE kit, it's like they, they've got loads of it now. There's like a mask, a face mask, a thing they wear on their head, a thing all over the body. And it makes you wonder... If uh, in our hospitals we've got little, you know, little monkeys walking about the wards helping out, and you've no idea because they've got that much PPE on, you, you can't see the little chimps out under there. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, helps help, and uh, I suppose uh, you know when times are bad, everyone's got a um, everyone's got a chimp in. You could say. Anyway, monkey news. There you go. I've always been a fan of a a song with a good story and that's that's up there for me um if you don't know it it's a story about a bloke who um he must be married with his girlfriend or whatever goes off to war comes back and his uh his legs are all done in the relationship goes a bit downhill she starts leaving him at home she's going out getting rat assed every night he's fed up and he wants to um by the end of it, he wants to do her in. He's had enough. Um, just a good example, really, of uh, of how things can change. At some point, their relationship was all rosy, and then it's uh, it all changes. I mean, we're all being tested at the minute, aren't we? Really, with this uh, virus thing going around, stuck at home with your partner. Um, I've been alright, we've had the odd day 
Me and Suzanne had an argument the other day about who had the biggest head. I don't want to go into full details, but uh, of who had the bigger head. But it got to the point of getting out a tape measure and measuring the circumference. And um, it just all happened because I ordered a cap that stated that one size fits all. And it, it, it fucking doesn't. I just wish I'd sort that out because now I've got a fanny about and send it back. One size fits all. Noise me. But then again, I suppose that's what life's about, isn't it? Getting annoyed, being happy, being worried. Well, that's a lot, isn't it? Being scared. Um, that's living. I do like a good moan. And I do like a worry, in a way, for a little bit. It's a bit of a pastime, keeps your brain active. I always remember um, a few years back, I used to think about death a lot. You know, we all sort of come into the world in the same way, don't we? But the way you go out, you don't know. You don't know what your um, exit strategy is uh, is going to be. And I'd, uh, I'd let that worry me. What's going to happen? Is it just going to be in my sleep? Or is it going to be something horrible? Um, it would mainly happen when I could hear a clock ticking. It was a little reminder that time was just, you know, ticking away. And that's my life. And, uh, yeah, it used to bother me. And then I read a story that made me change my mind and it was about a bloke and he um he died in his bed when a cow fell through the roof through the ceiling landed on him and and you know squashed him dead and um for a bit I was like oh god that's really bad that's that's probably going to be me that have something horrible like that, and but the more I thought about it, the more I thought it's not, it's not actually that bad. It's not like um, you know an illness that drags on and on, and you're getting weaker and you're just miserable and you're sat there just, you know, waking up every day thinking, oh, I'm still here. How long is this going to go on? It just happened quick, and uh, and even even to the point of even if he heard that cow coming through the ceiling. I don't think he would have had any any worry because I bet I bet his brain was telling him he was still asleep and it was a dream because why would a cow be coming through the ceiling so it sort of made me realize that it's the people who are left behind who um, is more upsetting for isn't it I mean it's the wife isn't it who has to deal with the with the upset of losing her husband and um, and on top of that, she's got like a hole in a roof that she's got to sort out. She's got to get a tile around. She's got to have the, the sort of loft rebuilt, get a, get a plasterer in to sort out the ceiling. There's a lot of hassle there. And even before all that, getting a cow out of the bedroom, because that would have been wandering around, wouldn't it? And that's that's not an easy task, shifting one of them, especially if it was upstairs. If it was upstairs in the bedroom, they don't go downstairs, do they, um, cows? There's something about the legs. I think they can go upstairs, but they can't walk down. So all that hassle, he's, he's no idea. He's gone by this point. She's got all this shit to deal with. And that's, um, it was after reading that story that I realised that, you know, it's pointless worrying about when and where you're going to die. Because you, you'll never know. But all I did was I moved the worry. I've talked before about the worry hole and you've got a space in your head that you've got to fill with worry. So I went from worrying about how I was going to die and where I was going to die um, to just worrying that Suzanne will die before me, which I wouldn't want. Because at the end of the day, death is, is more of a ball ache for the people who are left behind, which... Uh, Will definitely be the case for Suzanne because she's got to try and find a coffin that will fit my big fat head in it. 
so that will serve her right for taking the piss. A little bit of karma. Right, um, I wanted to talk about UFOs today, and I haven't. I've sort of ping-ponged around a bit there. Maybe do it next time. This is a little bit linked to how I started thinking about it. I saw it on some BBC documentary the other night, and it's Curtis Mayfield, and they were saying how uh, he was doing a gig in America, and the, the lighting rig fell on him, and um, he, he was paralysed from the neck down. So there you go, you see, you never know. Good song this, though. Superfly. See you later. DJ Shadow. With, uh, this time, I'm going to try things my way. And the story is that the, um, the vocal of that was just found in, in some building. On, a, like, a bit of old tape. And no one knows much about it. I think all they know is that the, um... Some fella called Joe. I think the name Joe was written on the tape. But other than that, they don't know anything about it. Bit of a mystery. Which I thought was a nice way to sort of chat about another mystery. The mystery of UFOs. I've sort of been watching quite a bit of footage on the internet of uh, UFOs recently. I think it's just a, a good escape, and it you know everything's a bit sort of shit at the minute, isn't it? No matter where you're living, no matter what country you're in, everything just seems a little bit shitty. Um, so sort of looking at otherworldly stuff is uh, is just a, a good escape. And there's loads of footage out there. Some of it you kind of go, oh, that looks good. Some of it is is a joke. I mean, there was one that I clicked on. That was a, a bloke that was it was clearly off his tits because he was filming something out of his bedroom window he was going there's a bright light oh look I can't believe it I'm being visited there's a bright light and it was, it was clearly a street light um, so there's a lot of lot of knobheads like that but now and again you get some footage or hear an interview or something that you go well this confirms it for me um, like you know there's other stuff out there and it was um, it was a bit of a chat that Joe Rogan was having you know, the Joe Rogan podcast, he was chatting to some commander who um, was flying about in a, like a, you know, a fighter jet. And um, and he was whizzing about, enjoying himself. Um, turns his head and sees this UFO just floating about above the water. And he was like, what's that? And now this fella's seen loads of stuff. If there was new technology out there that we don't know about, he probably would know about it. But he saw this thing and he was like, I, I don't know what that is. And he started ping-ponging about all over the shop. Um, he said it was shaped like a tic-tac and it moved about like nothing he's ever seen move about before. It was like going left, right, up, down, and at high speed as well. It just didn't make sense to him. Right? Um, they got some radar footage of it. I'll just show you that. This was it here. It was like moving along at high speed and it was just turning at the same time. Which is a bit odd. But um, who knows what it was. But I've had a, a theory for a while. <coughs> Octopus. If you look at them, they look a bit alienish, don't they? This UFO was floating above the sea. So there's a connection there already. Um, all the arms, which you know would probably come in handy if you if you're flying about something that that commander saw. I imagine that's got a lot of joysticks, a lot of buttons to press. You need a lot of arms. So there's that. And I saw this video ages ago. Yeah, I'll show you this mimic octopus. All right. Now the skill that it's got, it's like, um, let me just show you this, right? So this diver here, there he is in the water, he's swimming along, minding his own business, doing a bit of filming, not much to see really, and he just sees this little bit of seaweed, thinks nothing of it, there's a little fish, little black and white fish, oh that's nice, there's not much else here, I'll, I'll just film that black and white fish there, moving about, and oh good Jesus, what is that? An alien. That is an alien there. 
Um, let's just rewind it again. It goes from that, just looking like a blob of moss, to that. That is amazing, and off it shoots, look. Going back to planet Zonk. And think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it? If you were an alien, where would you land? You wouldn't bother landing on land, on Earth. Because it's, it's not going to be left empty for long, is it? Is it you're going to find a little plot, you'll go, this is alright. And before you know it, bulldozers will turn up and you know build a new Starbucks or something. So, they're better off going into the sea. And there's more of it, the, the Earth's 70% water. So if you're going to sort of base yourself anywhere, you're better off in the water. Especially at the minute, it seems like one of the safest places now, doesn't it? I don't think the, uh, I don't think they get the virus underwater. And I tell you another thing that makes me think that I, that I'm right here. If you Google big, big octopus, what comes up is the Pacific octopus, right? Where was where was this uh, Tic Tac UFO spotted? Over the Pacific. Makes you think, doesn't it? Could be wrong, I could be right, which uh, sets us up nicely for this next song. Bit of Public Image Limited, Rise. I'll leave you with that. I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with this isolation thing, because, <laughs> um, like I say, I wasn't joking. I don't know loads of people, and I'm happy. You know, I've got Suzanne in the house. There's always a job to do. It's been three weeks here now. I don't know how long you've had it, but three weeks. And I'm, there's still loads of jobs to do. <laughs> loads of jobs about the house. <laughs> and I'm quite happy with that. I'm really, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, today I've done, I mean, I've been so busy, but just today I've descaled the kettle, yeah. which needed doing. <laughs> What's descaling a uh, kettle? Do you drink much tea over there, or is not that not, not a no? We do, a we do. Bit. I've just never descaled a kettle. Well, you kind of know that your kettle needs descaling when you have a cup of tea, and you can sort of see a, a sort of a film on top ah. of the tea. That's when your kettle needs descaling. You just sort of put this liquid in it, yeah, and it gets with all the hard water that's built up and sort of gone hard and clung to the kettle. And it means that it's not boiling the water that well. Okay. So you descale it. So that was the first job. This was about... That would have taken 10 minutes. What do you, you do for the rest of the 23 yeah, yeah, hours? Yeah. And how long are you going to spend no, talking no, that, about that it? No, that was job one. That was job one. That was job one. Oh, yeah, job then one. That, that got me in the mood. You've got to start off the day with a, a small job like that. Nothing that overfaces you. I knew that I had to put another coat of paint on a, a light outside. I did the first coat yesterday. So that was on my mind. I thought, I've got to do that in a bit. But I want a cup of tea first. But I saw the kettle. But this needs descaling. I'll get that done. <laughs> Whilst I was doing that, I looked at the toaster. Now the toaster. When was the last time you entered your toaster? I did it. Oh, I did it. Yes, I did it yesterday because there was all crumbs yeah. and crap everywhere. There was so well, much. Exactly. Well, it never ends. To be honest, when you empty it and you take it back, there's still crumbs in it. You can there never is. get them all out. It's oh, a you job agree. that never is actually completed. Oh. So I, I, it's I a never-ending toaster. Out into the garden. I emptied it. Loads of birds are getting some crumbs, some burnt toast, and what have you. So they're happy. I yeah. took it back in. Right? So yeah. I got that done. Okay. I then did my painting job that I told you about. Then I wanted to, I noticed on the bathroom door, the handle kept it in a tile when I opened it. So I thought I can sort that out. I can glue a little bit of rubber to the wall so it's not hitting the, you know what I mean? So the handle doesn't hit the tile and could end up cracking the tile. Faith, are you regretting asking this question yet? No, I'm not. No, I'm into it. I, I love this. Keep, keep going. Keep going. I cleaned the sink <laughs> in the garage. There's a, there's a sink and it had a build-up of hard water on that. I've got some stuff on that mm. to do. What else have I got to do? Oh, I've I, I got my steamer out and steamed the, the shower cubicle because there was some sort of mould build-up. So all I'm saying is there's loads and loads of things that you never get round to doing. And they're not, they're not massive jobs. But you've always got something else to do. But when you're stuck in the house, that's what I'm enjoying getting the house in order. Oh, just quickly. Can I ask There's you loads. this quickly? Oh, sorry, oh, I know you're going to let him go, 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 but just I'm dying to ask you this, Carl. I'm going to guess you're not a phone person. Like, you're not someone who welcomes phone calls or drop ins. And are you good at texting people back? <sighs> If there's a question mark on the text, I'll answer it. <laughs> if it's just a, 
if I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into sort of just chatting because I, I would prefer a phone call. And if it's something important, I think you've got to talk to someone. If it's just you can't have sort of nothing you chat on text. I don't think that's a do you want to chat in it, and then then you make the call. Right. But I don't, I don't do that many phone calls. I speak to my mum and dad every other day. That's They're good. all right. Um, but not much is going on at the minute. I mean, they were telling me that they've ordered some meat from the butchers and they're bringing it <laughs> round. And, but no one's doing anything apart from me. These gaming kettles empty and so <laughs> But my mum and dad got sick of hearing that two weeks ago. Right. So it's it's not a time for, oh, how have you been and what have you been up to? Well, you're working and you're promoting Sick of It, which is part of ABC iView's Easter comedy binge. You can stream the entire series... One and two from tomorrow over our Easter long weekend on ABC iView. And Carl, as a former radio yeah. guy, is there anything in there that you think would be a good phone topic? I, I heard maybe, when did you last clean your toaster? 131060. <laughs> I mean, can you think of a good question that might come from the chat we've had if we wanted to do a, a little phone topic? Well, I've, I've been doing a little bit of um, quizzing just to keep my brain active. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll give, you a, I'll give you a question and then that you can put that out there. Thank you. And then, right. Go for it. And then we end the call, do we? That's yeah, yeah that's you'll be done then. We'll let you go. Right. So the oldest, the, the timepiece with the less parts, you know, like a, a watch or whatever. Yeah? Mm. A timepiece. Yeah. A timepiece with the least amount of parts is a sundial. All right? right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what a sundial is? Yes. Yeah. It's the thing you have in the garden. <laughs> okay. It's the oldest go. thing in it. It casts the time. shadows to yeah. tell the yeah. time. Correct. So, so that's that's the least the least pieces of a timepiece. Wrong it, question. It's just got that one metal rod. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. What's the one with the most pieces? <laughs> so this Cuckoo is a, clock. This is a quiz, but this, doesn't this go out to the audience, or do we just answer it now? Uh, I reckon it's good for the uh, for the audience. <laughs> I think they've got. <laughs> but then you're not here to answer it. So, okay. Is there an answer? What's the answer? Well, 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 yeah, then. but I'll give you the. I don't want to give you the answer now. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, we'll play a song. Do you want us to call you back? <laughs> <laughs> we'll play a song. Someone can tell us the. You, you, you can you tell text us. me with this because he's got a question mark. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll see how we go with that. Thirteen ten sixty. Carl has said, "Oh God, it was the longest question ever." Something to do with the timepiece with the most amount of what? <laughs> Working parts. The, Working parts. The most parts of, of sort of parts. Okay. Yeah. So if the you... sundial adds a big the bend. Least yep. Amount of parts. Okay. How many? Uh, what timepiece? As the most part. Fascinating. All right. Uh, if you can answer that question, 13, 10, 60. Is there a prize, Carl? Um, no. Okay. Carl. See you later. Learn See how to are. use Zoom, bro. Yeah, you weren't on Zoom that whole time, so we can't, <laughs> we can't use any of that for... What do you mean? Well, oh, sorry, you, mate. The, you, the, there's a camera where, where we can see you, but you can't see us. See where it says oh, yeah, Carl on the side you. of the... I can see you. I can see yeah, you. Yeah, but we can't see you. No, I know. Well, I've turned the camera off because I don't like the idea. If, if I had the camera on, you wouldn't be listening to what I'm saying. You'd be looking at what wallpaper I've got and all that. Well, I mean, well, that's I, the whole I, point I of a Zoom. No, that's the whole point. Like then you get, but then you get people going, "Oh, I don't look at that. Look at that thing there. What's that? Why is he wearing that?" He hasn't you, tidy mate, I'm in my daughter. Daughter's, I'm in my daughter's bedroom. Why aren't you in the station? Well, it's a, because, because we're, we're in lockdown. We're in the middle of a pandemic. God, he's got that bad over there. What? The, 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 he's doing yeah, well, it's, it's worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can go. You can fit people here that on the radio or in the studio on that. It's not. That, it's not that bad. <laughs> okay, you're, bad. Not, you're not a health exposed person. Um, <laughs> no, that's true. Stay home. Right, right, just put the video answer. on. I want to see where you're at. Can you just turn your video on? No, quickly? exactly. That's it. You start looking at your plug sockets and everything. I, I don't. I don't. Well, you've been it. fixing your whole house for the last week. <laughs> Should yeah, look good. but he's not ready yet. I'll, I'll <laughs> I don't know what he's got in right, there that he doesn't listen, want us to see. I just want to know how. I just want to know what timepiece has the most parts. <laughs> okay, well we we're gonna answer right. it on the phones. Tell us now. Now tell Here us. We we're go. off. We're off. Right. So the question was just a recap in case you just tuned in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the timepiece mm -hmm. with with least parts was a sundial. All right. Yep. My question was, what's the one with the most parts? That's right. Egg timer. Because of all the granules of sand. <laughs> oh! Of 
course. Yeah. That, that's very good, Carl. Very good. <laughs> good point. Right. It's good that. Good one, I'm isn't it? it? Right. <laughs> Proud of himself. Another one. When I speak to you in three years, Tom, I'll <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you you've done your wallpaper. Why, <laughs> <laughs> Carl? Good on I think a lot of people are sick of a lot of stuff. Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Everyone's it's... a bit sort of. Everybody's a bit down. We need. And actually, sometimes. No, I think it is. I think it's news. Do you? I'm trying to cut news out. Right. That might be quite drastic. Do we not need news? No, well, but how much? How much right, should okay. you have? When I was growing up, it was just like 6.45 news. Yeah. But now we're bombarded by it, and I wonder right. if we're getting too much. I think you're right, because we're getting an awful lot of news and we're not getting an awful lot of analysis. No. We get constant, so constant left. information. Well, they say the they... more you know, the more you know you don't know. That's very true. And it gets you down. It's like, you know, like years ago with smoking, when it first came out, doctors said, you want to smoke? I don't just endorse. It's good for you. Yeah. And I think in years to come, people will be saying... We all went wrong and there was too much news. We all went a bit mad with it. Too much news. So I'll cut out the news, it. watch sick cut of it. Cut out the news and it'll, be, and it'll be fine. Do you worry about things like coronavirus? Do you get sort of... Or do you, or is that too big? Is it me small things that annoy you? Yeah, it's little niggly yeah. things. I think that's, that's out of your hands a bit, isn't it? Or yeah. it's in your hands. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why we have to wash your hands. We do. But, yeah, I try not to worry about the, the big stuff. Mm. I don't think you can. Otherwise, you'd never leave the house. No, that's very true. And, and life is hard and we all just have to get on with it, I think, as best we can. Yes, we can do. Now, look, what about Ricky Gervais? This is a quote, if people don't know it. He said, this is Ricky Gervais saying this, not me. Received wisdom says there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Not true. Carol's an idiot, plain and simple. Very simple. Some people have proclaimed him a genius but they're idiots. Now, Ricky and you, would you get back together again, like a, like a sort of boy band, you know, the, the way that they do? Yeah, but is that a good idea? Is a boy band getting back together a good idea? Well, ever? take that was a good idea, don't you think? Take right. that, maybe? <sighs> no, no, OK, we're going to fight. <laughs> I just think you've got to, like, leave things. Right. They were good. They had their time. People liked them at the time. Okay. You bring them back. It's never as good. Right. I think people like the idea of going back to something they liked when they were younger. Sure. I mean, we, we stopped doing the podcasts about... Well, Idiot Abroad was ten years ago. Was it really? Ten years ago. Wow. And people are still going on about it. I know, but that's because people loved it. Yeah, but I, 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 I wonder if it came back now, if people wouldn't like it, because, mm. you know, so things have changed, haven't no, they, they, with, have. like, sensibilities and that? No, that's true. I'd oh, probably gosh. offend everyone. There you are. I mean, yeah, you? does anyone want to see that again? <laughs> I don't know. I think they might. There's me there. And there's you. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, though. Things, things do change. And so if after that, you kind of almost retired a little bit, but then you got a bit bored. I had a go at retirement. Yeah, it didn't work. I think I did five. In fact, last time I was on here, I said yeah. to you, I've had enough. I know, I remember. Knocking it on the head. Can't you said, be doing with it. it. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. But it's, it's hard. Is it? Everybody sort of has that dream of retirement. You know, that's what everyone's aiming at, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't have to work anymore. Yeah. But take that out of your life and you just... What's the point in getting up in the morning? So you get a bit bored then? Got really bored, was driving the girlfriend like up the wall, I was taking things apart that didn't need taking apart, right. letting things annoy me. Like, do you know like how you get chicken fat in between the doors in an oven? Yes. Things like that bothered me. Oh, it was like it? my main aim to like, I've got to get rid of that, <laughs> which isn't healthy. So you've, you've got to, you've, yeah, you've, you've got to have something to, to worry get about. up for. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, things, and, and things that you can do something about. What makes you happy? Like, if I was to say to you, today I could do something for you that would make you happy, what would it be? <laughs> um, Steady. Get, 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 get my name right. That's no, true. I, I think. Um, true. I think. Yeah, no, you're I, right. I'll tell you no, what. I'm looking forward to getting home. At the moment, it's been a wet winter and that, and I've got a lot of algae and moss on the oh, on the that driveway. Oh, that drives you mad, doesn't it? So I'm um, I'm enjoying. I started it yesterday, and I really like that, like that thing. That's really simple process, but you feel like you're doing something. At the end, you can step back and go, I've done that. I achieved this. I've achieved that. And you feel it looks better. Yes. You know, I, yeah, I've done it. And that's so it's simple smug things feeling. like that. That's slightly sort of like, you, you feel quite smug about that. So yeah. when you tidy your knickers. Other people pay to have it done. This is true. And it's like, well, I can do this. Exactly, of course you can. And uh, yeah, I think that's good for your head, isn't it? Yeah, no, I agree with you. It is, you're absolutely right. Cleaning. Cleaning. Cleaning, yeah. Cleaning is really good. Yeah. Cleaning is great. I agree with you 100%. So. Next, are we going to see more? I've, Have you been sick I, of it? Or honestly, what's I've, I've, I think this has come to an end. I think it's right. got a nice end, okay. this. Uh, it's out on DVD, by the way. That's why we're here today.
So oh. it's been out on Sky. Right. Watch it on Sky on demand if you've got Sky. If you haven't, whilst you're out panic buying, grab a DVD. You've got to stay in. Give it a watch. Give it a watch. Um, I don't think there'll be any more no. of this. Right. I think it's got a nice end, and I really don't know what. I've, I've, I'm not. A, I'm not one of those people who has a five-year plan. plan. I got you. I'm not into lining up a job before I've finished the last. I like to do one thing, get that done, see what happens. So this might be the end. You oh. might never see me again. I think we will. You might not, though. I'm just saying. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Mr. A lot of people will be happy about that. Mr. Pilkington. Oh, you, you still do. Pilkington. Pilkington. Right. Pilkington. Pilkington. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, my angel. Have you ever thought about making the jump from writing and entertainment into power? Uh, I'd like yeah, to see you maybe be the Manchester United boss. Imagine you're, you're dressed for it now, you've got that kind of sports look about you, Carl. Imagine you, it's, boss of Manchester too United. Late, isn't it? Who can go in and fix that? <laughs> you, I think you'd give it a good old go, no, wouldn't it? I feel sorry for, for Ollie. I mean, again, get annoyed. I'm a, a, a kind of a United fan. What would be your managerial style? Shouting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of a, I'd be a Fergie thing. And, and to be honest, that was one of my New Year resolutions that I'm going to try and. Because Richard, who I did this with, I always struggle in life at getting points across. I know we're just chatting here, and hopefully what I'm saying is clear. But sometimes I've got a lot going on in my head, and it's trying to come out quicker than I can work it out. Right. And. When I'm trying to describe something, people sometimes just look at me like, I don't know what you're going on about. <laughs> and I get frustrated, and then I have to shout. If, if, like, nothing changes, I have to shout for people to understand that I'm not happy. Yeah. Because they haven't got the words or the brain to do it in a calm but clever way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. in football, that would be the hairdryer treatment. You'd be a hairdryer type it, it guy. It would, yeah. And I don't know if that would work in this day and age, you know, where the players who Fergie was sort of managing is different from your Pogbas and your Lingars now. Maybe shouting, they'd just go home and that'd be that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't listen. It, it wouldn't work. But you got the Tony Poulis type outfit on with the old with baseball the cap. cap. And <laughs> yeah, old, old, yeah. old school. Old school. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, the position of power thing... <laughs> The other thing with me is, I can have a proper rant. I do it all the time with me with my girlfriend. I'm like, I have a proper moan, and she's brainier than me, and she'll go, "Well, you're wrong there because X, Y, and Z," and I'll go, "Oh yeah," and that'll be that. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so I can I can feel like you know, let's fight them on the beaches. Yes. And then someone will sort of go, you know, we can't. The tide's in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll go, all right, yeah. People who have never heard of me before, I did radio. And How did you catch who, that break into radio then? It's a weird one because it came at quite a, a, a time when I thought my life was going to change for the worse in a way. Um, like I say, I listened to the radio as a kid and thought, yeah, I want to do that. And I did a bit of DJing, you know, I got decks and that. And then um, my dad had to have a heart operation. And, like, uh, this was about 87? Yeah. 88. And I remember, like, my man was dead worried. It was quite a big deal back then. I think the operation he had wasn't... Now they'd do it and you're sure. in and out in a day. Yeah. But back then, it was almost like, we've, you know, we've got the world's best doctors in for this. Uh, oh, come on. I don't think so. I mean, it's within your hospital in Manchester. But they got in people yeah. who can mess about with arts. And um, they got on with that. And my dad sort of said, to me before and you know this isn't straightforward might not come out of this you've got to look after your mum and my mum was like dead upset I remember we went to the Withenshaw Hospital left and went home and my mum was sat on the end of the bed sort of really upset and I kind of felt like shit if this goes wrong this could change everything because suddenly you feel like you've got a responsibility I'm like I've got to look after everything and um that I remember thinking, oh, I don't, I don't like this. So I went from that to them visiting me dad after the operation. He turned out all right. Visiting him in the hospital, and a lad coming round going, do you, want, do you want a request on um, on the radio? And I was like, what, what, what are you doing? And he said, oh, we do um, hospital radio. And I was like, what, what do you mean? What, how's that work? And he's like, well, you, I said, do you get paid? He said, no, you don't get paid. It's voluntary, but you play records and you. T he said, oh, all right, how do you get into that? And he was like, oh, just send us a note if you're interested. Send a letter in and uh, we'll get back to you. And that's how it started. So it's weird that there was this point in my life 
that could have been it could have been a different you know like sliding doors that totally. film. Could, my dad could have died I could have ended up having to look after my mum I wouldn't have had the opportunities I wouldn't have moved to London no, no, no. so that could have changed but it went the other way and like going to the hospital meeting that and then I, I did hospital radio for a bit and um, met someone who knew someone at Piccadilly who did a night shift and they used to help answer his phones and that and he was like, I can't do it anymore. I think he was moving to Kent or something. And he said, do you want to go in and uh, answer the phones? And I thought, definitely. I bet you couldn't believe it. Definitely. Uh, it's, it's so weird. To go from visiting your dad yeah. to hospital radio yeah, to, to now you get in. the break in this. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're not and it's just getting your foot in the door. And Manchester is such an like, the Piccadilly oh, radio yeah, such yeah, an iconic. Ma- it was massive. I yeah. mean, back then as well, it was massive. Chris Evans caught his Chris break Evans there. Chris Evans was on there. there. Um, yeah, quite a few names, like Timmy Mallet. Uh, I know it's not the same, but um, Gary Davis. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of radio people who came through there. And um, and once I got my foot in there, that was it. It was like, I'm not letting this go. Because I, I, knew, I knew, like, by that point, my exams were shit. I really wanted to... I knew that... It was like, this is what I wanted. This is the dream sort of thing. And um, once I got in there, I just... Whilst they answered the phones, I just go into studios and teach myself to edit, doing little demo tapes and stuff. And um, and then I started. I kind of started earning money, putting out pre-recorded shows, like you know, presenters who didn't want to work at the weekend used to just record all the links on and a bit of tape. You'd have had the passion that a lot of those guys. Oh, I loved it. I'm not knocking any any, any other other guys there, but because this was your boyhood dream, yeah, you got all the passion, the energy, it. the enthusiasm. Yeah, you know. and I was getting paid, and that was my life in a way. For years, I just I spent most of my time there. If there was any any work that was there and a chance to earn some money doing what I like. I just took it and I basically lived there. I mean, I, I buggered myself up, I think, because I remember being physically sick from were... being tired, Yeah, but kind of like, no, I've said I'll, I'll do it. And, then I, um, and yeah, it's just all come from that point. And I've never got a job through like an interview. I've never had to go into an interview and sell myself. It's been sort of from that point, get me foot in organic and then like proving yeah, that it's like no, I can I can do this. Just give us a chance. I'll do it and I'll work hard. And then that's better than any sort of, of course qualification is. or big. Because anyone can win an interview, can't they? You can all that stuff, and it just seems everybody's a bit mental at the minute. Everyone's like lost, aren't they? Everyone's everybody has a a, a a certain moment of just being lost. Yeah, but sometimes I think that's all right because I think that's quite. As part of the human condition, that we're all to put their hands up and go, do you know what? I'm a bit lost, and I don't really know what to do. And I don't. Really, it's a bit like you at the moment going, I'm dead restless. I kind of don't want to do anything, but I want to do something. But I feel like I need to do something, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, I know. So therefore, what are we doing? Are we overthinking? I don't know. Do you think you're overthinking this, Carl? Because it seems something that's. Quite weighing heavy on your mind at the moment. I'm, I'm. Well, because you get one go at life, don't you? You want to make sure you're not wasting it. That's the, that's that's the thing. You know, I don't believe uh, like you get another go and all that. You get this one go. And I was watching um, a video the other day on YouTube of you know Christopher Hitchens. Is it? Yeah. Really brainy bloke. And I always, sometimes, I, I I just like listening to brainy people. I haven't got a clue what they're going on about sometimes. But I, I admire, like, the, the way they can just say what they think and it's worded perfectly. Do you know do you know the Stephen Fry types and all that? Yeah. Love that. Wouldn't you love to, like, love to be like that? Christopher Hitchett. He's, he's, he's like that. But on this video, it's before he died, like, a couple of weeks before he died. Yeah. And he was on this stage talking... And he still had his brain. He had cancer and that, but his brain wasn't affected. Uh, his voice was a bit. But he was so passionate about the stuff he was talking about. And he's like right up, he's close to death. And yet he's still like loving what he was doing. Yeah. So it makes you sort of watch it and go, shit, he's dying there. And look at him. He's loving every minute. And I'm pissing about here. And maybe, you know, Suzanne's right when she's, or whoever's saying stop cleaning. I, sh- I can do the cleaning, but I need something else. To make sure I'm, I, I don't know, I'm doing something worthwhile, I think. I haven't got kids, so it's not like I can say, well, I'm bringing up the kids and uh, I'm teaching them 
stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a cat. She can't even teach them tricks. <laughs> it's not like a dog. They just look at you, don't they? So it's like, what am I doing on the planet? What am I doing now? What can I do? And uh, she said, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we got there. And she said, but I have booked us a day out. And I was like, oh, you shit house. Do you know what I mean? I was like, this the why you're telling me now. You see The Apprentice. You know, yeah. there's some proper bullshitters on there. It's a proper skill, isn't it? But I I remember, um, how many years ago? It might have been seven years. I don't know. It might be further back than that. But my agent, when I first moved to London, and I'd been doing the radio with Ricky and Steve, and... He was like, oh, there's, a, there's an actor's part come up. Uh, you've just got to go to the casting. And that was probably the first time it, it felt like a proper interview. And it's demeaning as well, isn't it? it? Totally bottled yeah. it. Got in there. I could hear the people in this room acting out this scene. Yeah. I hadn't really learned it. I yeah. kind of thought I'll just, I'll just sort of do a version of that. And um, I could hear this. In fact, I know who it was. It was a bloke called Ray Peacock who does podcasts. Yeah. Ian Bolton is your name, isn't it? Right. Well, I've, I've only met him at that place. And he came out and he was really big. He's quite a big performer and that, isn't he? And I was out, I was, how, how was that? And he's like, yeah, good. And I just thought, I can't, I can't do this. But I didn't want to be rude and just leg it. I thought, I'll have to go in and tell him. I just went in straight away and went, look, I don't want to waste your time. This isn't for me. I don't want to put you through this. I don't want to put myself through it. I don't want to do a, a walk off. And the agent was like, what are you doing? That's a missed opportunity. He's like, well, not really. It's not what I want. You told me to come here. And yeah, maybe it was an opportunity, but it's not one I'm ready for at this moment in time. And if there's one thing I know about myself, it's I've I've got to be comfortable with that thing. If I'm not, I'm a mess. And that's what Ricky and Steve picked up on on the travel stuff dropping me in situations that I haven't prepared myself for. I, I, I break down. I'm rubbish at it. I'm not, you know, like James Bond, he's like, he can think he can add it all. He knows a, yeah. He's like, I can deal with this. I'm, I'd be, I'd, I'd just go, oh God, uh, and that'd be the end of me. So I wasn't ready for that. And Good for it, you. But it's weird how, I don't know how many years ago that was, that's what I've ended up doing. But in on my your own terms time. though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in my own time. So, um, when people say that line about, oh, if something comes along, grasp it. Take, take every opportunity that comes along. Sometimes, no, don't do not do that. Think about it, but don't, don't like, spur of the moment, this could be it. Well, yeah, but is it what you want? And is this the... There's other paths to where you want to get. It's like sat-nav, innit? It always sends you the route everybody else has been sent on. Yeah. Which right. means that it's not the quickest route, no. it's not the best route. Go a different route. And you'll get there. You'll still get there. You might get lost on the way and find something else. But it's that thing of, you know, there isn't... It's like when people say, what advice do you give? It's like, I don't, I don't want to give you advice because it might not work for you. You've got to work out what's right. So true. Yeah. So, um, and it's worked out, you know, it's kind of... Some, everything's not, you know, as good as a, I thought it could have been. Could have tried harder, could have... But it's kind of all right. I'm happy with me lot. So, um, pretty, uh, pretty heavy, that, isn't it? No, no, I mean, I, 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 that was, that was I, one of those for me. I don't know where that came from. That was good. Only, I could, it was like a was Mandela. I, <laughs> I, I didn't know I had that in me. But, I mean, it, it's it's amazing because then you you got moved to London. Yeah. So, what, was that your choice or was that the, the, through that the station? That was my only choice, to be honest. Um, I used was to it be... Either, was it moved to London or get made redundant? Well, I was made redundant. Well, sat. So that, 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 I got told that you, yeah. I, I lived in Leeds. Was yeah, a sports yeah. writer. You, you you either get you're gonna make we're gonna make redundant or you oh, move to London. Well, it was a bit different from London. that. It was so so. Uh, you, mean, got made you mean <laughs> you mean they sent you to London? Yeah. It's like there's a job there. Well, I I had a job at Piccadilly. I had a job on air doing my own show through the night. Got sacked off that for talking too much because the station had changed a bit. Yeah. And um, Steve Pank, who used to do the breakfast show, he. I used to produce his breakfast show after after I did a night shift from two till six. So you hosted your own show two did till six. Did my own show two till six, and then after that I had to produce the breakfast show. What do you mean six you, got, you talk too much? Yeah. What do they want? More music? Yeah. The strap line was like Key One Hundred Three, the most music, and I was playing about three songs an hour, and I kind of thought because it's through the night. Do those recordings still exist? I doubt it. Well, they, I doubt it because that was one of my jobs to put in. It was videotapes. And you had like three video recorders recording all the output yeah. of the station. Yeah. And it was your job to sort of 
change those tapes, and there was times I forgot. Sure. So, I, I suppose technology... I, I don't know. Yeah. They haven't cropped up yet, and that must have been, what, early 90s. So, um, yeah, I just waffle on. And oh, and then sorry, Steve Penk. You were saying Steve Penk. So I'd, I'd pre- so I'd do my four hours, and then I'd, I'd answer calls for Steve Penk and make promos for his show, uh, make him tea, uh, set up callers. You know, it's just it's just all that sort of producing thing. People always go, oh, but, you know, people say Carl's daft and that, but he was a radio producer. You know, as if like you have to be bright. To, I know this to radio producers out there, but it's not hard. It really isn't. Unless you're on like maybe Five Live or Radio Four, where you you maybe listening to interviews and you're going, oh, that's liable or whatever. But I was just dealing with putting Edna on, who's requesting Elvis. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there, there was nothing hard about it. There was no there was no struggle. So um, so yeah, so I did that. But the boss, they used to do these things called <laughs> Snoop tapes, where they'd listen to your show, and they'd just uh... get you in for a meeting and play it to you in front of you. And I remember, like, one link that, you know, I was talking for about four minutes or something, and he was just sat there looking at his watch, like, as if to say, how much long is this going on? And he stopped it. He went, ah, I, you know, you've got to stop doing this. Otherwise, you know, we, you're not right for the station. I was like, all right, all right, all right. I walked off, and then uh, I kind of carried on, because I thought, well, I don't just want to do that sort of... Uh, China sure. Crisis there, and they're coming up, boys to men, stay there, there's 20 to 4 in the morning. And I used to sort of think, <laughs> the people listening to it are security men, nurses, cab drivers. They all want some, you know, the callers used to enjoy the stories or the competition. They, they want quite a lot of competitions, yeah. And, and I used to say that, and they were like, it's not our strap line. It's like, yeah, but the, I was here before the strap line. Yeah. And, and I used to listen to this station before that strap line. There's people out there who don't all want to hear the same fucking four songs. You know, every... I mean, it really was tight. I'll make love I can remember the you. CD numbers of some of these, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, because it was just like the same shit. And I, even that, I'd changed the music a little. I didn't go mad, but I didn't always play the same, the, the right songs. But... Um, so I carried on, and in the end, they got me in and, uh, and sapped me from doing the show. But Steve Penk and... This woman called Rose, who was the boss's PA, said, "You know, he's a good, he's a good lad. He works hard. He can still carry on doing the technical operating and the producing. So at least I was earning some money. I was a bit gutted. I was off air, but I didn't want to do a show that meant that you didn't you know, want to do. Yeah. Th- not through the night. It was doing me no good. Yeah, really unhealthy lifestyle, isn't yeah. it? Being up all night yeah. just to play." Like in Boys to Men every night. So I thought, well, that, that's the end of that. I, I always wanted to do it. It was the dream. Again, a bit like what I said earlier. Sometimes the dream isn't as good as the dream. It's, uh, you know, so it's the end of that dream. But I've got a job and just produce a show. And then Steve Penk left to come to London, to go to Capital. And I can't remember who took over the breakfast show, but someone did who, who had their mate to be the producer. And I got into production, which meant like doing all the promos for the station, like sort of all technical term here for people who don't know, but basically yeah. just like making adverts and yeah. stuff. But even that, there was three of us doing that, and then I think there must have been a recession, and they said, we don't want three of you doing it, we just need one of you doing it. So it was sort of, when you say redundancy, that normally means you're giving some money, doesn't it? Oh, I've had times where I've been married redundant and given no nothing. Money. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that was the case with this yeah. one. It was like like maybe one month, and it was like well, halfway through the month anyway. So yeah. it was like a couple of weeks' wages, and then Steve Penk, who was coming to London, said, "Have a word with this boss of Capital." I was like, oh, I don't know, but I was with Suzanne then, my girlfriend, and she just said, "Look, you've got nothing else going so on. Why not? Why not?" And yeah. I was like, "I don't want to go to London." What am I in London for? This is where my life is, not that? Yeah, but there's nothing going on here. So I called up and they got me in for a meeting. In fact, it was really good. I think rather than the redundancy, the station gave me tickets to see Michael Jackson at Wembley. Brilliant, that, isn't it? Got a mortgage to pay. Not giving you any money, but here's some tickets to see Jacko. Anyway, I took them. And what I did was I arranged to have the meeting with the bloke at Capital FM when I was down here ah, to see Michael Jackson. Nice. So um, so that sort of covered the train fare and everything. So I went in, met him, got on with him all right, and he was like, nothing's here at the minute. You can't work with Steve Payne. We've got our own producers, but yep. we'll give you, um, you know, something might come up. And 
and that's where it all sort of started. They gave me a job at... Um, they were meant to be buying Virgin Radio, but it fell through. And they'd sent me to a station in Kent, in Victor, to do training because all the equipment was different. I was used to using reel-to-reel yeah. on tape. But by this point, in London, it was all digital editing. So we were a bit behind in Manchester. I didn't even use email. I remember coming down here and it was like, set up your email account. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? It was like I'd gone into the future. Yeah. Like I'd been in a coma and gone, what, like a caveman who had just been dropped into this world. <laughs> set up an email and go, I don't know what you mean. And I remember sending me first email and then the boss coming down going, why are you shouting? What's up shouting? Oh, oh, everything's in capitals. And going, well, yeah. So what? That's how I write. Because when I write yeah. in print, everything's capital. So why keep having to press this button for certain words to have a big letter? So I was like, just caps lock it, sending everything. <laughs> it's like, he's mad in that northern bloke. He's shouting at everyone. Anyway, so so that's where it all started. I was sent there to do my training. And um, on the hope that I was living in London or rented a flat in London, because I said to the boss, I have not left Manchester to work at a tin pot. No disrespect to the station there, but it was a bit crap. It's gone now. Station in Kent. I haven't left Manchester to work there. I've come I've come to work in London. Sure. So he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, that station fell through. Buying Virgin yeah. fell through. Mm. I think that's when Chris Evans bought it or something. Ah, uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the boss was like, don't worry, we're going to be buying this station that we think suited for you, which was XFM. Yeah. So it kind of all worked out. It was a battle, and I was driving to Kent and back every day. I had to get up at like five in the morning to get over to it was near Whitstable and I lived on the Docklands so I was near the Blackwall Tunnel and stuff but I was really I was just working like a nutter girlfriend was with me she didn't have a job yet I had a flat in Salford on a mortgage that I was struggling to pay for as well as the rent and I think I'd saved up money I'd always been a good saver a good saver yeah. I always wanted to make money and I didn't really know what it was for but I always saw it as a security it's like my dad always struggled but paid the bills and it was like that was in my head it's like, you've got to pay your way, you've got to pay your way. So I was always like, oh, money, 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 making money. From a young age as well, like, just always coming up with ideas, making money. So um, I'd literally spent all my savings on this flat in Salford and the rent in a flat in London. And, you know, my mum and dad didn't have any money. And I, they always talk about the time when they came down to visit and I was really struggling, like... You know, they knew that it was all coming to an end. It looked like I'd probably have to move back. And then I got a phone call from um, uh, a fl- a, 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 an age, like an a, a state agent yeah. in Manchester, saying we can let you flat out. I was like, oh god, that that'll help big time because it was in quite a rough bit of town. So I was thinking, no one's going to want to rent it. Someone rented it, and then I think like a day after, someone called and Suzanne got a job. So suddenly it was like, oh, double God. whammy of double, goodness. Yeah, it's like we were so close. It's that thing again of like we've got to, we've tried, Sliding hasn't doors worked again. out. We've got to go, but yeah, it just all happened at the right time. And my dad always talked because they were there. He always talks about it. He goes, oh, I remember, and it was years ago. But obviously, mums and dads can see what you're going through, of probably, course. and they probably saw the relief and the weight lifted off my shoulders when suddenly it was like we're all right. We can buy a bit more time here. And I got that job at XFM, and that was going all right. I got on quite a good wage, and then obviously Ricky and Steve came back. And again, a little bit of luck. I was just put with them as a producer to put on the adverts and put in the CDs and um, for their show. And then I used to talk to them, and they'd be like, "Just you know, do that bit, do that, do that thing you just told us on air." And that straight, I was like, no chance, because I'm having flashbacks of being bollocked at that station in Manchester and being fired. And now, like, you know, rent's not cheap in London. Da, da, da. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And they, they were like, no, go on, it'll be, you're with us. It's all right, don't worry. So slowly, it was like each week, they, they, they'd sort of get me on the show a little bit more, a little bit at a time, just like the odd link and what have you. And then before I knew it, it was like, it was kind of part of that show. And it's... Uh, it, everything since it's all gone from that really um so yeah it's a weird it's it's been an, an odd sort of path but everything from that from doing the show with Ricky and Steve I, I sort of enjoyed radio before that I started to hate it a little bit when I was with them they just do me head in a little bit 
and then all the stuff that's followed, it's never really been the dream. It's just stuff that's come along as a result as of. a result of that. But I'd still say radio was the, the one dream. The other jobs been like I've never thought I wanted to do it, but pff, seems interesting. The travel stuff, I was like I don't want to do that, and it was my girlfriend who was like, look. Just do it. You're never going to go to China in your life. You, you, you yeah. don't want to go to China, but do it. You're getting paid to go. They're going to fly And you're going to see it. And yeah. you don't have to go again. Yeah. And I remember the first couple of trips, I hated it. I was calling, I called home a couple of times going, how can I get out of this? I had an agent and I was going, oh, what? I can't be doing with this. I hate it. I'm ill. I hate it. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. Did you even say, get me out of this? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, can we... And you go, you've took some of the money because they give you a bit of an advance, so give it back. I haven't spent any of it. Give it them back. Well, you can't. The cameraman's been paid and the director and there's money already been spent. Well, we've done two shows. Give them them. You can't just give them two shows. It's the seven wonders of the world. You can't do two wonders of the world. And I just like, oh, And then the girlfriend was like, look, stop stressing because I was going, oh, this is like trip two. There's another, like, five... I don't want to do it. And she was like, but why are you why are you worrying about the others, the other shows, the other trips? Just do just worry about the one you're on now. Focus on one at a time. One at a time. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're probably right, you're probably right. And that's what I did, and before I knew it, it was over. But again, Suzanne's always sort of been there just to, she's the one who said about going to London, you know, do it. Whilst if it doesn't work out, we can come back. I I, I do tend to be a a bit of a pessimist, which I don't think is a bad thing because it's just because it seems like everything I've talked about has worked out, but it hasn't always. But when it doesn't, I kind of go, ah, I knew that was going to happen, so it affects me less. I, I, like I said to you, it's a protection. It affects you less. Yeah, the the, the, the the pessimist in you is preparing you to hit that iceberg. Yeah, so that when it does happen, at li- you know, you go, oh, if it happens, I knew, happens, gonna you know, happen. well, I knew it. I told you that was going to happen. And sometimes Suzanne's all stressed out and annoyed because something's gone wrong. And I, I was ahead of her. I, went, I felt like that about three days ago when I was moaning at you. <laughs> so stop moaning. Stop, you stop moaning now. You know, you know what I mean? So um, I don't think this... It annoys me a bit when people sort of go, oh, you're a pessimist. It's like, well, maybe I am, but that's, we're not all the same, are we? We have Absolutely. different ways of working stuff out. Um, Growing up in Manchester, whereabouts were you? South Manchester, place called Sale. Um, drove past it last week. Did you? Mm, we were up there doing some recordings last week, so I drove yeah, past yeah. Sale. Yeah, uh, racecourse estate, which is massive, massive estate, and all the all the avenues are named after you know racecourses, so Epsom and Chepstow and all yeah. That. And um, I don't know. What do you want to know? I mean. So it's you, your mum and dad. Yeah, brother and sister. They, they are they older or younger than you? Carl? Older. Um, and it was it was all right. Uh, I'm trying to think. It was just all. I just used to. What do you want? That? I mean, was it like uh, it, it was what it was? You just kind of well, this is where we grew up, and it's kind of fine. Because I'm trying to picture you when you were growing up as a kid. Yeah, I mean, what age are you talking here, then? Sort of like, you know, you're seven onwards. Seven, right. So I think I've got a... <laughs> you sounded a bit angry, Carl. I'm no, but, but <laughs> se- I, that's all right, no, se- seven... Do I have picture... to be really specific? No, it's just like, you know, if you're talking about being really young, it's like you have little flashes, don't you, of things but that, that was going I have on. terrible memory, like, going right, right back. Yeah, but some people are like, I remember being breastfed. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like, why would you want to remember that? <laughs> I thought babies were designed to forget yeah. that. But, yeah, so I don't remember that. Uh, that's what I was worried about when it's like, what was it like? It's kind of, <laughs> no, I'm but, not going back but, there. But, 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 yeah, so seven. Seven's <laughs> like, um, have you started school at seven? Uh, yeah. Right, so I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Um, seven is infants, isn't it? Mm. The infants going into juniors, yeah. Yeah, so at school, I didn't. I didn't like it. I knew by that point I didn't like it. What um, did you like about it? Do you remember? The school wasn't great. It was a wreck. A wreck of a school. Right. It's not standing now. It was falling down then and it was it was always cold. I remember that. I don't I didn't see the point in having a uniform because I always had my coat on. Yeah. It's like I could be wearing anything under this. Freezing and it was ro- really rotten school like um if you if you got done, 
and you did detention. It wasn't a detention, it was just you staying behind for half an hour. Did have you doing stuff to the school because it, it was that much of a wreck. Well, like, like, I remember DIY type stuff. Really? Yeah, you'd, I'd, I'd re putted a window. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was about, uh, like you say, seven, eight. <laughs> Which, which, looking back on it, in a way, that's quite good, isn't it? Because yeah. that's something that's useful. Rather than just sat in a room doing nothing. They've got you doing learning lines. a, tr- what, learning a trade. Yeah. What, but it's a trade. So it was that. And I, I, I did weeding as well. Weeding in the playground once. Did not have a caretaker? I don't think they did. Because, who'd, honestly, it was such a wreck. A caretaker would have walked in and gone, fuck off. <laughs> I'm not looking after this. Because it was a wreck. Proper wreck. And it's at that time, maybe councils were struggling then in the 70s. Yeah. And the walls, I just remember walls being like really damp. You could just sort of put your fingers in them. Oh. And um, really depressing. Um, Was that the general feel from out the school, like with all your mates and stuff? I, well, we, I suppose you don't know anything else. But again, looking back, everybody, you know, I've got a couple of mates who still see and they sort of go, oh, God, it was bad there, wasn't it? It was bad. Um I suppose you only know that when you've got perspective and you go, to an, you go to another school and you go... This is a bit better. It's a bit better. Yeah. It? Yeah, I can take my coat off. Not as bad it's, as that. There's heating. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I suppose in a way you're never going to enjoy school when it's like that anyway, are you? It's not... How can you in surroundings like that? Yeah. Um, what else was Were your doing? brother and sister at the same... Did they go to that same school? Even though they're a, they're No, a because older. we moved... I think we came from another part of Manchester when they were at that age. Right. Like in, uh, just near, um, what was it called? Chortland on Medlock, which is just near the Manchester Apollo and that. That's where mum and dad were. And then I think they were a bit slummish, the slummy area, and they wanted to clear that. Right. And they moved everyone out a bit to these new council estates. What, so, what did your mum and dad do for a living, Carl? Oh, I mean, how long have you got? My dad, uh, as long as you still, want. but it's just my dad has done everything. To this day, I, I see him quite a lot and I speak to him on Skype if I'm not nipping round. And every time I speak to him, it's like Mr. Ben. Do you know? He's, he kind of goes, that reminds me of the time I did that. And he's kind of like, I didn't know you did that. It's re- if he did a CV, it'd be, it, you'd bring it out in hardback. <laughs> Honestly, he's done everything, everything. Because he's from that time when that's what it was like. Yeah. You, you, you didn't need loads of qualifications. You just go from one job to another, a factory yeah. closes, you do something. So he's done the things that I remember is mainly uh, a lot of driving stuff. Um, work for the Express, some sort of transport manager style thing with yeah. the delivery of the papers to the shops. He's done, he had a courier, got a couple of vans, did courier stuff. He had a black cab. He did turfing, which I helped do that with him. Um, honestly, just just The endless, list goes on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, loads of things that I remember him just doing. Um so yeah, your, was he always around then, or was he going away a lot to work? Or he's, he, I just the memory is with me dad work. It was almost like I, I, I knew that's that was his role in the relationship. It's like he was earning the money. It was my mum's sort of job to look after us, and like he did a lot of night work as well. So when you're talking about me being younger, I remember not being able to have that many mates round because it's like your dad's in bed. Right. Yeah. 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 Don't be noisy. Yeah. Everything's sort of like... Yeah, I used to have a mate like that. We used to go around, have a school, and he goes, shh, shh, shh. Yeah, it's, it's a night, it's a real pain in the arse. Mm. I mean, we, we, my mum used to always have the telly on watching soaps and stuff, and subtitles. Subtitles always on. I thought they were invented for kids who's like, <laughs> dad's work shifts. <laughs> I didn't know it was for, you know, deaf people. And that was the thing. Everything, I just remember sort of mooching about, and I was like, what are you doing? Don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you. And then it'd be my job to sort of go up and wake him up, and go, and he'd always be a bit groggy and knackered. Um, and yeah, that was that's my memory of him. So he was always doing that. My mum did jobs at schools, you know, uh, cleaner. She didn't work in the canteen. Yeah, yeah, work in the canteen of some college. I remember being at South Trafford College in the canteen there. Um, shop work, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. A bit yeah. of extra money. Something to keep her busy, but nothing that took over. You know, it was my dad earning the main money. And then towards the end, they bought a butty shop in sale, just near the station. So they work, work, work together on that? Kind of. My dad had the black cab as well, and my right. dad's not that good with people, so my mum didn't really like him in the shop. You know, if people are lingering, 
or getting in the way and they'd sort of stand near the door eating the button. It's like, it's not a place you sit down and have, but take it out, you're in the way. <laughs> and my mum didn't, uh, she was like, you're not good at this. Um, you know, if people wanted, it's, it's just not the sort, you know, the niceties you've got to do in a shop. Yeah. So interesting, yeah. the customer and that. My dad doesn't do that. So he'd make sure there was enough bacon in, enough ham in, all that, and then my mum would write, right, you go and do the cab, you, and then on pick us up later. Yeah. Um, so, I used to work in a news agent when I was a kid, and you know, some people used to come in and just sort of read the magazines. Right. I used to go, it's not a library. Yeah. Buy it's, it and get it's, out. It's true. I mean, you need a bit of that, don't you? Um, it's a balance, though, isn't there? I yeah. suppose if you're running a shop. Yeah, yeah. Because word spreads, you, go, you don't want to don't go, go in there. Don't go in there. Right, miserable sod, yeah. yeah. And, and I imagine that probably, you know, would have would have happened. But... Um, so, yeah, they did that, and that took up a lot of time. I mean, they worked really hard. That's that's the thing. I mean, I think that's been ingrained in me, really. What, a work ethic? Yeah. From me, Dad, it was always like I knew that you have to pay your way in life. It's like earn money, earn money. Don't You, you get nothing for now, earn money. And I, even from a young age, I was coming up with ways of making money. I was always working. I was never a kid who sort of stood about on a street corner sort of up to no good. So you'd I, always have a, like a Saturday job or something? Saturday job, paper round. I love me, I mean, to this day, love me paper round. Loved it. I, I, I loved everything about it. I Why? Loved, Why did you love it so much? It was early mornings. It was like out on the streets when it's quiet. There was no one there to annoy you. I had a job. I felt like I had an important responsibility that the first thing people rely on when they get up, the paper, knowing what's going on in the world. Yeah. I'm delivering it to them. And I, honestly, I used to do it at like, I'd be out at quarter to five. Really? I used to wake up the fella who ran the shop. <laughs> and I was like, and, and if I could, it meant that because I got up early, I could do an extra round if someone doesn't turn up, yeah. so I could earn a bit more money. Yeah. And uh, I just loved it, listening to the radio, going round on my bike, um, and delivering paper. Honestly, if you went round the streets where I delivered papers and said to him now, when was a good time for, like, when, when was your favourite delivery Thing. They'd say the period I did. <laughs> I reckon it's a golden. Do you know people heart back? It's not like it used to be. Like yeah. we were saying, they'd say, "Oh yeah, remember the like the eighties when that lad used to it used to be there for you. The ink was like still wet on the paper." And I just loved it. I, I took pride in it. I think that's still with me as well. It's like if I do something, I'm going to be like, as good as I can be. Yeah. At it. And I was the best. At, at, you know, I'm not a mega confident person, but I can tell you now. You I was were shit a, out of that. Absolutely brilliant at it. Everyone got the paper, didn't get ripped and stuff, shoving it in a letterbox, I cared. No it's dogs. It's the best job. Just honestly. So, yeah, I did that. I did, um, I worked in a supermarket. Um, did you ever go in for a milk round? I remember when milk rounds were quite yeah, popular. No, I never, I think I preferred the working on my own. Yeah, because otherwise then you've got to speak to you've the You've got to deal with this or, bloke. Yeah. And it, it's annoying. It's going to be annoying. So, so even back then, when you were younger... Being by yourself and having your own company yeah. was very important. Yeah, I liked. I, I just saw people as um, at some point they're going to disappoint me. Yeah. Um, did you ever think I'm, I'm, I might disappoint them? Maybe there's a bit of that in. What do they expect from me? Or what do they want from me? Yeah, I know it's bad, isn't it? Well, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. No, no, I do. I do worry about that. Um, so they paper round shops. I sold stuff, um, what computer you mean, sold, games. What like what what like in a shop? No, no. I used to <clears throat> buy them with me own money mm. for like three quid, and then copy them oh, and sell them at school. What, and on, tape to tape, tape to tape. Yeah, and um, that was another. I was raking it in. <laughs> Honestly, I was like a Gordon Gecko. I had so much money. In fact, that's it. Got to the point where that's what I was going to school for. I was really busy, like. Um, yeah, just selling these games. It got really flogging. popular. Making loads of money. That ended because a, a kid, I did a game for a kid and then it didn't work and he said, not working, it's like, I'll have another go at copying it because he started to, I think it was getting harder and harder to copy these things. Yeah, because the, the computer games company kind of got yeah. wind of it, didn't they? And it was like, I'll do it again, do it again. And anyway, he told his mum, then his mum come in and it's kind of like, what do you tell your mum for? Oh. Because it was like his dinner money, and, uh, and um, yeah, the head teacher sort of gave me a bollocking and took, I must have had about 12 quid on me that day, and he took all that off me, and that was all from the computer again, so I couldn't do that. But that was a good little earner. I sold um, fizzy drinks. My dad had a soda stream, 
So I used to like go into the bins, get loads of empty bottles, give them a wash, make fizzy drinks, and go to school, sell them for like twenty five p and stuff. And I, that it's funny because thinking back, I I used to stand there and go drink it then, and I'd be like, I don't want it now. It's like I want the bottle. <laughs> It was stuff like that, but I did loads of money. It was all little scams. Like, not even a scam, really. It's just making money. If I've got to go to school, I've I want got, to make this I've worthwhile. I've got to get something for me yeah. from it. So it was all all stuff like that, washing cars um, for people. It was all, like I say, that was in my head, got to earn money. And I wasn't. it wasn't because I needed it. I wasn't, like, spending that money on anything. I just liked it growing in this white tub I had under the bed. And when I, you know, a few pound coins or whatever, a few notes, it's like change that to a fiver. Yeah. And then, oh, it's building, change the fivers to a tenner. And it was just something to look. It was almost like watching, you know, growing a plant or something. It was just watching it get bigger. And I enjoyed, like, I suppose it made me feel like I've got a worth. Yeah. You know, it's like that, I've done that. That money there that's growing, I'm, I'm doing it. It was for no reason other than just seeing it as, a, I suppose, security as well. You know, hearing that. Hearing from your dad that you need money. But it is like your dad, because your dad was doing all these all so different jobs stuff. all the time, so you were looking up to him yeah. and doing what he was doing. And I didn't know, I didn't know what I'd want to do with my life if I wasn't working. And in a way, that's what's happened later on in life with, with this. I thought I'd got to a point where I didn't have to work and I didn't want to work, but it's, it's important, isn't it? I mean, how did you... Uh... Give it, you know, it's, it sounds like radio is this foundation upon which everything else has been built on, on top of that. You know, that was definitely. The, but how do you, how do you, given, you know, it's not like, it's not like you were doing the comedy circuit for 10 years and then you catch your break. It's not like you went to drama school no. so that when you get that break, oh, well, I've, I've been preparing for this for years. How on, uh, how on earth did you cope by, from, from being an unknown guy to yeah. then? I mean, there was a there was a time where oh yeah, you're like the most yeah, talked about like man in the it, country. I, know, I really didn't like it because it's not me. I mean, when I say I know that I'm a pessimist, I also know I'm a bit of a um, what's the word when you don't don't want any fuss and you just kind of I always sit in a corner. I always get in a corner. Yeah. I mean, even now talking to you, I've crammed myself in a corner <laughs> for going to rest. What's it called when you don't want introvert? Introvert, introvert. Yeah, I'm, I am. I am one of them. And I think the reason I liked radio is because it was a way of sort of getting stuff off my head, but talking to myself in a room. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do, yeah. All right. This is Yap. Hope you're enjoying this compilation. This is David Bowie's Starman. Halfway point of the compilation. Enjoy the second half. Cheers. You're probably station. working some stuff through, Just getting, you? working out, chatting what's on my mind, and sometimes people laugh at stuff that I say, and I kind of go, well, it's not meant to be funny, actually. There's a bit of a breakdown there, but I'm glad you found some humour in it. But um, but I kind of, that's that's me. It's like sometimes I feel like I've got a lot in my head, but I don't really want to mire the people with it. Um, Suzanne's sort It's a great of, northern oh, word that, that, that that's not used in London, mither. Is it not? I don't think so. My granny used to say Moither. She's from uh, Lancashire, Yorkshire border, Barn Oldswick. So she used to say Moither, but I know it's my, my right, like, um, So she'd be like, I'm, I'm Moithered to death. Right, so it's like, has, I don't, don't want to hassle people. No, but I, 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 the, the word Moither should yeah. be used more. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, a, it's good. It's such nice. a beautiful it's some, word. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't... I don't... Um, don't want any hassle. Because there's even... Um, there's a DVD extra on extras where you are filming a scene, and it, it's oh. the, the. But even on that, you 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 make a point of. I, I, I want to just sit in the corner. I just want to. Do, yeah. do you remember the bit I mean? And you even say something like, "I'm doing that thing where I'm on my phone, but oh, I'm not really on my yes, phone." Oh yeah, on the extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The day of being a real life extra. Yeah, I'm not very good at. Um, I'm not the. The life, and I mean, I don't go to parties because I don't like the feeling of too many people. I got a little bit better when they sent me on my travels because I had to go to a couple of sort of festivals and things like that where yeah. there's a lot of people or a carnival in Rio or some sort of religious thing in India. But I remember getting really stressed out because I'm not good in large crowds. If I do go to an event, I've got to be up on the edges. Um, so that there's a... a, a metaphorical and literal escape room yeah i think i think it is i don't i just don't like all the 
and it annoys me because I know I know like you're meant to enjoy some of these points in your life and in the year like New Year where it's all about you got to get together you got to be with people and celebrate stuff together. And I sort of go, I'd rather not, thanks. And that can come across really like, oh, you miserable bastard. But it's like, no, no we are all I'm not. I'll tell we? you what, I could come along. I could come to that party. That's going to be so fucking amazing. But I'm going to hate it. And I'm going to ruin it for everyone else because they'll be going, what's up with him? Who's that moody sod in the corner there who's just like keeping himself to himself? I don't like it. Yeah. So I kind of wish, I wish I could. There's times when I see people... Well, I was watching Antiques Road Trip last night, and there was a woman on it just laughing all the time. Laughing at stuff that wasn't funny, but just laughing all the time. So her laugh became a bit redundant, because it's like, you're just laughing at everything. Yeah. But Suzanne was like, no, she's happy, isn't she? I'm going, I don't know. Well, I, I, and she's going, oh, no, you're not. Are you? you're, you're a bit miserable. I'm going, no, no, will you stop? It's just, I'm not like that. Is it ser- serotonin? Or yeah, ser- serotonin. Yeah. We've all got different levels of that, haven't we? So she's just pumping it out. They've obviously got a lot of it. And and if it's genuine, if that's how much that person is laughing all the time, it's like, that must be amazing. But there's no point me coming in here going, James, because <laughs> he's not real yeah. and it's tiring. I'd be so exhausted. <laughs> I've got a day of this. I've got a day of interviews. So like you said, there's no point bullshitting. There's no point me coming in, pretending I'm something I'm not. And if if I walk out of here and you go, Jesus Christ, that was hard work. He's a moody man that's the way it is and a lot of the time I don't go to events and parties because I know I'm a bit like that and I don't want to ruin it for other people so rather than going because I've been asked and I end up ruining it I prefer to go thanks and everything but it's not really my thing and I'm pretty sure once I'm not there there they enjoy the party I'm not on the mind everyone's not at that party going shame Carl didn't turn up they don't give a shit that I'm there or not so I kind of just take myself out of it and again, it's a bit annoying for Suzanne at times because she's like, "Well, if you're not going, I'm not going." I said, "Well, and she, I'm not the making times that she rule." Quite like to... I'm not making that rule though. You can go, but I, I don't want to go because I know that I'll end up annoying you anyway. So we might as well have this argument now about me not going rather than having it later about going but being a moody shit in the corner. Yeah. So, yeah, I wish these times. I wish I was a bit different, but I'm 47 now. And I don't think it's going to change. But I mean, also to pick up, I'm, I'm picking someone at random. I don't know him, but but if you think of like Elton John, yeah. at him at a party, he's going to work the room. He's going to be laughing. He's going to be. We can't all be. You know, I, I can relate to what you're he saying. Is? You reckon? I reckon. I reckon. All right. Well, I have mean, you seen the film Rocket Man? No. Is that a ter- have I picked a terrible example in Elton yeah, John? Yeah, because he had a big do, and um, all on his land, on his big house, everyone's jollying it up, drinking all the booze that he's paid for. And he's sat in a room having a breakdown. It just goes to show. I literally couldn't have picked a worse person. You've, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it just goes to show, you see, how other Not people see, or, see people yes. and go, what a life and soul. Of... And sometimes the happiest people are the ones who go, like, have you heard about John? The, uh, what, the happy fellow? Yeah, he shot himself in the head. <laughs> because because he, he hasn't released the sort of, the, the, the fed upness. You've got to let it out. I'm sure we all have it. But like I said, that person on Antiques Road Trip, laughing their head off, looking at antiques. It's not even like he's at a stand-up gig or something and you go, well, I can understand why he's laughing. That's Fair a funny enough. Joke. Kevin Bridges is funny. barometers <laughs> and laughing about, you know, the weather. It's just like... And, and I feel myself getting annoyed and I go, this isn't healthy. I should be happy. Are we getting kicked out? I don't think so. It's but I mean, go and... I think that, but, you know. Uh, sorry, go on. No, no, well, it's just that. It's just... Um, You've got. It's very hard and dangerous to try and please others, and I think that's where I started when I said about writing sick of it. There's people who probably go, "Oh, you should do more travel," and I kind of go, "That's what you want, but it's not what I want." So maybe that fan has come to the end of the line with me, and maybe they've got to like either listen back to the old stuff that they like or find someone new. But it's very dangerous to do work or anything in life just to please others, because I think it catches up with you and you'll get caught out if you try and please others. I, I mean, there's, there's one thing I think... I can only speak for myself, but I think I speak on behalf of others. One thing a lot of us dream of is retirement, right? Yeah. So we think, oh, I'll be able to retire, retire, retire. Yeah. Um, 
what often happens is people reach a, an age where they they have to retire and then sorry to lower the time but they they drop dead because yeah. the work was probably the thing that was keeping them going so you i know that you a few years ago yeah, had it on the head you'd probably thought great i don't have to work anymore yeah like i said to, i've said in this you know the um the the money thing was always there from a young age making money because you need money in life to not so you don't have to rely on others so even the boy on the estate knew i've got to, i've got to. Oh, uh, because of that estate it was seeing the people on that estate there's a bloke, bloke who lived a couple of houses down called casey and i just saw his life just go to shit in what seemed like three weeks to me but it was probably a year two years and he just didn't have any 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 go in him it was like and to be honest a lot of old school mates and stuff have gone down that route of life's hard isn't it I've just got a job I hate, but then it's all right. It's the weekend. I'm going to get leathered and, you know, get get themselves into all sorts of mess. And you just say, I knew I didn't want that. Yeah. I was like, I've, I'm in it. I can see what's going on. And I definitely, definitely don't want this. So it was all like earn money, earn money. And yeah, you're right. A few years ago, I paid off the mortgage and uh, was like, well, that's it. That's all uh, I've been working for really, to do that. And um, I think I did six or seven months of nothing. What were you doing? Pottering about. Um, The things I enjoy doing now, but in between work, it was the bit of gardening, um, uh, cleaning. I love cleaning. Um, Movies? Yeah, gardening, cleaning. Yeah, I'd watch films, um, walks. But it's it's the stuff that you enjoy because sometimes you don't have time to do it. When that's all you've got, you kind of it's not a novelty anymore. Sure, it's like when you see people on that program, Place in the Sun. They went to Benidorm once for a week. It was a brilliant holiday, so we're going to live there. It's like it won't be the same. No, it's not a holiday. No, you're living there within six bills. months. You'd be like, yes, yeah, yeah, of course. There's always. I mean, I don't think there's the perfect life anywhere. There's always a compromise. I think, but. It was that thing of, I can't do it. I was driving Suzanne up the wall, you know, just messing th- messing about with things that didn't need messing with. And um, she was just like, you've got to go back to work. You've got to go back to work. But it can be too hard on a... There's some horrendous statistic about uh, divorce rates with, with footballers. Too the, much time. Well, because the footballer goes from, you know, let's say from the age of 18 to 34. Training, football, playing, football, training, football. Playing. Doesn't even, barely, like, barely sees the wife because he's away at Swansea yeah. or whatever. And then he retires and they're seeing each other all the time. And it's like, fucking hell, we didn't even... It's, it's like Big Brother. Didn't even know each other. in a house yeah. with someone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Is that why this podcast is called Balance? Because it's t- about life, like, it's that balance, isn't it? It's uh, everything in life, too much of it. It ruins it. It's not healthy. Too much of anything, you know, whether it's... I love biscuits, but having two, you kind of go, oh, that was nice, but I was to stop there. You eat a full biscuit, all those biscuits you really loved, but you eat a full packet, you feel down, you feel sick. So it's just... Um, Finding that it's right tricky, balance. Yeah, and, and it does worry me because at the same time, when I'm working, I do have a moan as well and a bit of a, bit of a breakdown. Like, I can't do this, you know. Like I said, I didn't do well in school. And writing something, it's harder for me than it is for most people who are making telly because it's harder for me to work it all out in the head. So I'm like, I can't do this. I shouldn't be doing it. I haven't got the qualifications. Someone else should be doing this who could probably do it better. And Suzanne's just like, I can't. You always do this. You know this happens. Every time you get like this, overwork, but you love it. So just get back in and get on with it. But it is part of the thing. I do like it. I like the struggle. I mean, they sort of say... It's the hard stuff in life that sort of keeps you going and a sense of achievement when you get to the end. That's right. Yeah. The easy stuff, yeah, it's easy, but what do you get out of that? You're challenging yourself. Nothing. So it's making sure, it, again, it's a balance. I don't want to be one of those people who works all the time where you don't have time to enjoy those walks or me cleaning or, you know, doing the gardening. Sure. But it's nice. It, it, balance, it's balance. Everything's balance. Well, be, before we go, if 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 this is the end of sick of it, sick of it. What what do you have up the sleeve? I don't know. I'm never. I don't work that far ahead. Um, I kind of like to uh, 
finish something and it's all completely done, put away in a box, don't have to worry about it anymore. And then it's like you hit control alt delete and go, right, what is it I can do now? And you see what comes in, see if anyone sort of gives you an idea of something that you might want to do. But I've never had a plan apart from that radio show. Like I said to you, the podcast happened because Ricky came up with it. The travel stuff came about because one of Steve's mates who worked in telly sort of came up with it. Uh, I think um, sick of it came about because I told Sky I didn't want to travel anymore and they said, well, how about writing something? So I've always kind of been guided, but I'm very good at kind of going, yeah or no. I never want to know how much I'd get for that thing anymore because I don't want the money to be the reason to do something. That's right. But but I, I like to sort of just go, let me think about it. And then it's dangerous because the more I think about something, because I am a bit pessimistic, you can I can easily come, definitely. Yeah. And I always, I, I can feel it when I'm, I start going, oh, yeah. and I've got to pull myself back a bit and go, well, hang on, I, there was something in it that I liked. So let's focus on that rather than the I, shit bit. So I have no idea. I mean, with that in mind, I mean, you know, you think like the Eagles got back together, Fleetwood Mac got back together. Would you, yeah, Rick, would you, Ricky and Steve, would you ever get the band back together? But isn't it what when the Eagles got back together was it any good? I think so. They called it when Hell Freezes Over because one of them had said, "Would you ever get back together?" And they went, and "Yeah, when, when Hell, Hell Freezes Freeze over. over." I just wonder if things have changed i mean one of the things people liked i think and it's dangerous to try and work out what it is that people uh like about you but i think what they liked about the radio show with ricky and steve was that they were sort of on the up they're just on the office they're like show busy and then there's me just there to play in the adverts and i used to get a bit scared when they were swearing and I'm meant to be responsible for them, and I could get the sack here. Yeah. And I think people like that sort of... Um, dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. Say if we go back to it, and they can't, I've grown up. I can sort of hold my own a bit more, um, thanks to them. The stuff they put me through did change me and broaden my mind. That, that was Steve's aim with all the travel stuff. And I kind of feel like... I think people will feel a little bit... Like, uh, yeah, it was good. It's good to know that they're not dead, but um, but they sort of ruined the what he, what I used to like about it. And maybe you know they listen back to it, and it takes them back to the time when they were younger and everything. Whereas we'll be sat there talking, they'll go and see a picture of the three of us and go, Jesus, they've aged, aren't they? And suddenly, oh, so have I. And uh, and uh, and then suddenly, it's it's not the same. I don't think everything can come back. You know, you watch Top of the Pops two or Top of the Pops on BBC Four. And you go, oh, it's 1988. Let's watch 1988. And you go, Jesus Christ, what a shit year for music this was. <laughs> but at the time, it was good. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, Derek B, the rapper, he used to think he was quite cool. And him now, go, God, what a shit rap this is. I love the beat on the street. And you kind of go, turn it off. So I, sometimes you just have to leave. I saw Brother Beyond. It was shocking, this song they did. These stupid jeans on. And at the time, it was like, yeah, Brother Beyond. They, they, they were so cool, weren't yeah, they? Yeah. They were so cool. And it, it just, you look back and you, you can't go back. You can't always go back. And I prefer people to say, oh, it'd be brilliant if you lot got back together and did a podcast. I prefer them to keep that in their head, that that would be amazing. Then the thought of it being it, amazing. Which is what I said at the start about a dream. Don't achieve your dream and that. It's, it's the same thing. It's but, the same point, isn't it? But I guess the dynamic would, would be different. So, like, you know, Phil Collins used to play drums in Genesis, then becomes the lead singer. So if, if you... <laughs> I don't even got my eye. You feel good. Phil Collins, just because he's got a little round, round bald head. I love Phil, I love Phil right, Collins. Yeah, right. what, I mean, what I mean is, you, if you did get it back, the dynamic would be different. You would hold your own more. Yeah, but is that what people liked about it? I, I, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, it could happen because it's so easy, isn't it? It's so easy. You've yeah. just got to have a bit of time and three mics, and, and it doesn't. And it's not live. We could do it and see how what it's like. But there'd be a lot of pressure on it. I imagine even going in and going, let's just see what happens. We didn't know when we started doing podcasts. We didn't know if that was going to work or not. When I did the travel stuff, I didn't know people were going to be. I just did it because it's like, oh, I'll take the money. It's on Sky, and at that point, not many people had Sky. It's like, oh, no one will see it. Great, and then suddenly it's like, shit, people are watching it. It's one of the most, it's and the most it successful big. shows yeah, in Sky's yeah. history, isn't it? But that's what I'm saying. Suddenly, you sit down. There's a different pressure. You know, there's 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 something there that the past, 
and you're going, well, we live up to what we did. And sometimes that's why you've got to move on because it's very hard to do something when you know something was successful. Sure. So um, I don't know, though. I'm not going to say never because they say you shouldn't, but I, he's slim, I think. In fact, that's why, that's why that Bond movie was called Never Say Never Again because I think Sean Connery had said never. Oh, is that right? I think so. We it's, ju- it's true. It's true. People say go in the jungle. I'm a celebrity. I know for a fact that's never going to happen. Mate, so let's get that out there. Do it. It's never yeah. going to happen. So I know that. That's one one cert. Yeah. Um, why would you? Do, I mean, why would you? Because I, I look at Ian Wright. I love Ian Wright. And I'm, do you know, I, what? I don't even. I don't. I haven't watched it for about three series. I mean, we, I didn't have to say with Ian Wright. He's from a. I'm from a single nice parent. Fella, isn't he? Single parent working. Work, single parent family working class. I relate. I love him so yeah. much. He's successful, and I just think, why? why are you putting yourself through that? I man? mean, some people say, oh, I did it because I actually want the experience. And I'm kind of like, well, it's not really real, though, is it? Go go to the jungle yeah. if you want to go, and yeah. have a wonder. And if you get sick of it, you can go, you know what, I'm going to go home. It's not what I thought. But to be trapped... And the mercy of the edit, where, they, where you can well, come across it. like yeah, a could be, punk, yeah, yeah, there's that. That's quite scary, isn't it? But um, I'm also a big lover of like insects and that, and I don't like the way people stand on them and all that sure i'd, I'd be walking around saying watch where you stand yeah, you've yeah, just yeah. done on a fucking you're just teaching it yeah what? exactly <laughs> yeah. that's what i mean so that's that's the main reason i could never do it and i don't want to be stuck in a small place with you know people you Sunita might not like. or whatever yeah i don't I've, I've never met her but just just being trapped have they repeatedly approached you i take it then yeah ages ago and I, I said no and i think they know now i think they uh, and, and i'm not and i'm not saying i'm too good for it it's just that situation no, just not, of not I, my bag but I'm it always not, surprises me when people send me messages going go in the jungle go in the jungle it's like because you, you really don't know me yeah you think you know me but that that is never going to happen i'm that is not me what makes you think that i'd want to be in there sort of stuck it's just it annoys me a bit because it's like oh i kind of thought because of all the stories and thoughts and emptying my mind that people would understand where i'm coming from and then they go go in the jungle mate it'll, it'll be top bants and it's like don't i don't you know don't ever think i'm into any sort of bants that is so not me it's like how can you have listened to all the podcasts and shows and and think that i'm that kind of it'll be a right laugh i'd love to have a drink in a pub we don't go in a pub i don't go in pubs I don't, if I do, it's lunchtime when when it's dead. Not Friday nights. <laughs> it's my idea of hell. Karaoke, yes, please. So, I know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Have we got a worm? Go. I've got a, a Twitter thing. I'm not using that, though. But I just want you to know that that one is the official one because there's other knobheads who are pretending to be me and it does me heading. So you're not talking to me on Twitter because I don't do it. So that's that's the official one. All right. That'll be, uh, like, at Carl Pilkington. And I've, I've got a Facebook page that I don't, I don't go on it that much if you're in australia and you've got any questions put them on the facebook thing and i'll um i'll probably stay up late one night and answer a load so that's in your time anyway i've got some questions um that have come through and these are the sort of things that i get um kevin larock uh says have you ever been to canada no i haven't um James Duran, I, uh, is there any plans for Carl to visit Australia in the near, in the near future? Uh, no, that's why I'm doing these videos, it's, it's too far to go. It's probably easier to sort of go to the moon in a way. It's easier on the body because there's no sort of jet lag there. When you get there, you can stay up, you can stay in your own time frame, can't you? Go to Australia, it's like 12 hours difference. So I'd rather go to the moon than to Australia, that's, that's mental. Jason Cox says, hello, my wife and I are watching your show, Moon in a Life. Cheers. Uh, everyone's always nice on Facebook. Uh, Jason Cox, he just says that him and his wife are enjoying watching the Moon in a Life. New programme. Cheers. Um, Mary Stanley. All right, Carl, it's Wednesday. Tell me what you're working on right now. I'm not working on anything. I just want to have some time off. Uh, I've been travelling about. I've got a bad back. It's my L5S1. Sort of gone and worn out a bit. So I'm not doing... Um, in fact, I'm, I'm well bored at the moment. Again, that's part of the reason I've sort of agreed to do these videos. I haven't got much going on. About three days ago, you're not going to believe this, I was sat there trying to make the cat yawn. You know how they say yawning's sort of contagious? 
Uh, I wondered whether it was in the sort of the cat kingdom. I just sat in front of the cat yawning. After about 40 minutes, it yawned. I, thought, I don't know if I've caused that or it's just bored. But that's the sort of life I'm having at the moment. Um, I'm not up to much at all. Simon Bately, quick question. Would you rather eat shit-flavoured chocolate or chocolate-flavoured shit? Good one. Uh, probably... Probably um, chocolate flavoured shit, isn't it? But if it tastes nice, then it's not that bad, is it? It's like most food, isn't it? A lot of food, a lot of treats. I, I like full of shit, but they taste nice, that's why we eat them. So that's what I'd have. Hello, Carl, do you speak Portuguese? No. Um, have you tried a pomegranate? I mean, Jesus, these, these are the reasons why I don't go on Facebook and Twitter a lot. These are the sort of questions I'm getting. Um, I have tried a pomegranate, it's a lot of messing about. It's the one you eat with a needle, isn't it? I haven't got time, really. Well, I have got time. I was trying to make a cat yawn the other day. But I, I don't want to use my time eating a fruit that you have to use a needle to eat the pips with. You know, if you're meant to have five fruits a day, you're going to take up a full day eating fruit if you have to piss about with a needle every time you have a bit of fruit. So I have had one, but I don't like them. I prefer grapes. Um, just wondering if you've seen the Human Dolls programme on Channel 4. It's mental. Yeah, I did see it, yeah. Right, so that's that. Listen, I know you've been asked about this a lot, but so many people are texting about it. You had said in the past that you wouldn't be reuniting with Ricky Gervais again or acting again. Is that true? Well, it's just... I mean, who knows? It might happen. It's just that... God, the amount of stuff we've done together, it's... I don't know... It's like the podcast. I did a book signing yesterday and loads of people were saying, oh, are you doing podcasts again? But if we did, I know people would go, oh, they shouldn't have done podcast again. Oh, it's not the same. People always do that, don't they? they? They wish for stuff, and then when they get it, they go, it's rubbish, shouldn't have brought it back. Then they do it with uh, Dad's Army or something. It's rubbish. <laughs> so any, it's, it, I don't think it's ever good to sort of try and recreate something that was then. You know, we've, we've done about 400 hours of radio stuff, so if that isn't enough for you, you know, you can have too much of a good thing. It's like, um, do you watch much telly? Yeah. Have you ever seen Mad Men? Yeah. <gasps> now, it was great at the beginning. You know, series one, series two, but then it's got to a point where I'm watching it. I'm going, I don't. What, what, what's where going on? Is where, where are you now? I've, I've, to be honest, I've given up on it. I was on <laughs> series five, and I just thought this is like Coronation Street. Now I'm, we're it in the same storyline. <laughs> it rally, <laughs> it rallies again. Go back. No, to I'm it. not. I've been oh, that. I've been on. that. I've moved on to uh, Wayward Pines. Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> but, do, do you miss it, radio? Um. Because for some people, it's um, it's a bit cathartic. It lets you have a little rant. Some, I some guys it. on the tech saying that we should create a daily slot for you on the station. No, they're, they're loving honestly, it. No, 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 they're not. I <laughs> think I enjoyed it. Again, it's that thing of going back because things have changed a lot in a lot of radio. And the sort of, I worked in music radio. And when I first started off, I did a nighttime show and I was left to my own devices. No one cared. And I'd just chat away and have the same callers every night, having a chat and all that. And then they go, no, we're changing the format. Now it's more music. You talk twice an hour. And you're thinking, oh, this is rubbish. And I ended up being sort of sacked. Um, so I, I enjoyed my time in it, but everything's moved on. And I don't want to be one of them people who moans about, um, you know, keeping a job. Especially in radio, it happens a lot. You must know some producers there who have been there so long that they walk about in slippers. They're that comfortable <laughs> in the job that they're walking about and they've been there for years and they've got glasses on a little thing around the neck and they're moaning and they're going on about the days when, I don't know, Diddy Hamilton was there or whatever. And you just think, I don't want to be like that. You've got to, got to keep moving forward. And I, I think I'm pretty good at that. I've, I've done a lot of jobs and you've got to know when to call it a day. And I honestly think I'm on the edge here of the end, which isn't bad. It's just the start of something else. I've got to find something else to have a go at. What do you mean you're on the edge of the end? <laughs> because it's like you said before, I've become sort of chucked in with all these other celebrity shows you're talking about. And you've, I don't want to be part of that. So I've, I've done this for long enough. There'll be enough people texting in, tweeting into you going, I can't believe he's still getting away with doing what he does. And it's about knowing when to just say, yeah, that's been a good run. You know, I've done seven books. I've uh, I've made thirty episodes of travelling about, and I don't good on Michael Palin. I mean, full. I, I don't know how he does it. David Attenborough. How has he done it? 
Are we ever going to get anyone like that again with that no. much patience who can keep going and be that enthusiastic about what he does? And with that much gravitas and weight Oh, it's, it's amazing. But I just think, I don't know what it is. I don't know if we're a different species now. I mean, he's 90, so we could be. I don't know how long it takes for us to change. But you're setting the bar pretty high for yourself if you're thinking Attenborough, Carl. To be honest, well, thanks, aren't thanks you? For your support, I, mean, there. I think you're amazing, but you know, <laughs> we're talking about David Attenborough. He's like not even a human yeah, being. Yeah, you've, you've got to, you know, you've got to aim high, haven't you? Who's, who do you? Who do you? Sort I don't. Of look up I, to? I try not to. Kirsty Walker. <laughs> My mum. <laughs> no, who's, who's, I don't know. I don't know who's good in your field. <laughs> She's brilliant. You're absolutely right. I don't know. I don't know either. But by saying that, Carl, <laughs> but by saying going back to the beginning of the end kind of thing, are you? Are you looking for this new challenge? Are you going to step away from? TV, the spotlight, is it... Uh, yeah, I really get out of your... like it as much as uh, I've enjoyed it and it's paid off the bills and all that. I think I prefer to try and do something away from people sort of coming up to me and going, oh, what are you doing? Have a picture, have a selfie. It's, it's weird because most people who get into this line of work almost do it because they like that, whereas it all happened by accident for me and I find it a bit um, overwhelming at times that... When people, strangers come up and yeah. uh, it's not really what I like. So it would be, it's nice for people to say they enjoy something you do, but uh, it's also a bit not what I'm about, if you know what I mean. You mentioned Justin Bieber not long ago. He, he put yeah. out a statement online saying that he would not take any more selfies yeah, with You can't do that though, can you? It's part, it's part of the gig, isn't it? You can't have the... Uh, Good Just stuff without having the bad yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's that, isn't it? You know, you've got the different coloured smarties or whatever. They're all part of it. You know, it's... It, 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 yeah, you can't expect people to watch your programmes, read your book without wanting a selfie or whatever, but um, it's just weird because even my mum and dad don't have pictures of me about the house. So it's weird that strangers want a photo of me. But it's the world we live in now, isn't it? Some people don't even say anything. They just come up and stick a camera in your face and take a picture and run off again. Um, and I find that all a bit weird. What are you going to do instead? I've been thinking about it. I mean, it, you know, I only finished a book a couple of months ago, really, so I haven't really had time. Um, I'm just trying to forget everything. I'm trying to teach myself the ukulele at the minute. Oh, how's that working out? Not good, because I'm, I'm probably too old and my fingers are set in the ways and you have to sort of stretch them a little bit and stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm watching YouTube videos, seeing how I'm getting on. Could you eat a knob at night now? I wish I never said that, honestly. <laughs> it's the one thing I ate. What was it that David Baddiel said that time? Um, when you, you were saying, um, we, we were having dinner, and uh, we were, Carl was around, and David Baddiel was around, and Carl was going, I've done nothing. He's just on the radio, he's done nothing. And David Baddiel went, no, you did that song, Knob at Night. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's how I still feel. I don't feel like I've achieved anything that I'm really, really proud of. Well, his mum phoned him up and said, saw you on telly the other night. She thought he was in the office. It was just a bald bloke fixing my computer. <laughs> He's going, no, it was you. He's going, it wasn't me. I'd know if I was in the office or not. Yeah. Mm. Um, that is the sort of job I would imagine you would be doing, though. You'd be fixing, fixing something, stuff. wouldn't you? I'd probably be Make quite happy work. with it. Sorting some problem out in the lavatories. Sort of quite a manual job, I reckon. Yeah. Maybe a courier. That you come in, helmets on. Yeah, but it's a perfectly round. He yeah. wears a pink helmet, and they don't see the difference when he takes it off. Yeah. <laughs> Fair though, I've had a go at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but also I'd like to point out, I don't. It's Ricky who, who insults him. I don't call him. I don't call you names. I mean, I might sort of stand behind him and sort of cheer him on, you like do. the worst you kind do. of bully's mate. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to show you how good I am. I'm not even going to. No, he's a, he, if you I'm listen back on the old radio shows, he's yeah. always having a go. At he me. has a go. At, he said when he first met Steve, he said it was a shock. He said that first thing. He said, "Oh, that's a shock." So what do you mean? He said, "Well, I've never seen anything like it before." He's telling him to his face. Then he's putting on air that Steve's weird looking. Okay, so he started it. But like in the same way that you've sent me on these trips to make me stronger, mm. I think me saying that has done himself up a bit. Yes. Oh. No, he's he's. he's oh, look at you. Yeah. So in a way, you yeah. you've made me a better person. He went from a weird little goggle-eyed freak to sort of Clint Eastwood. Yeah. God, I suppose I have in a way. Hang Thanks, on, mate. Hang well, on, hang on. What was that picture from that used to be on the notice board in the kitchen at XFM? <laughs> it was your favourite, wasn't it? It's the weirdest picture of you. <laughs> it was from the Guardian, and you know when those, they they used the wide angle lens to get everything in. You were on the edge of it, so your head was really distorted. It looked like someone had picked up Stephen Hawking by the legs and whacked him against a wall. 
was right. really weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't and know he loved it. About. He really? used to go past to go and look at Steve. Hey, listen, we were both in the uh, Heat magazine Weird Crush. Uh, did yeah. you? How did you get he on? He won. He came number did one. Did he win? He won. It, yeah. I didn't even win, you see. So I got handed to Carl. Yeah. I no, lost that's out better, to though. Who did I lose out to? No, he him. So he's no, weird. It wasn't no, the same, no, it wasn't the same. No, different years. Oh, was it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> have, I, have I ever lost it with you? Pretty We've perfect, aren't I? I'm pretty perfect. No, I don't. I'm I don't smart, think I'd, funny, I sort I'm of go good, with good-looking, nice with names. I sort of go, you fucking knob. I don't think you can use that on ITN, but it's more that for me. I don't pick. Well, they can. Animals. They make a special exception for me. They allow. <laughs> yeah. They allow someone to call me a fucking knob. I've, when, it's the only thing they said. Can you it's actually handed down on parchment. Thou yeah. shalt not say <laughs> not, fucking knob. Not censor <laughs> unless it's unless it's against Ricky Gervais. The fucking knob. When have I lost it with you and sort of? Got annoyed and yeah, you haven't. You you haven't. Um, when, oh, you wanted me to call off the poster campaign when I made that poster campaign. I said around the world, and um, uh, there was everyone yeah, putting up posters yeah. of uh, um, Carl Pilkington, um, world's roundest head. Yeah. And you asked me to stop it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You thought it was demeaning. It's not glamorous, then. Oh, honest to God, it really isn't. <laughs> but I remember I met Michael Palin once because he had a book out at the same time as me, and we were chatting about it. And he said, oh, you don't like it, do you? And I, I moaned about certain things. He went, I know. He said, I feel the same way about it, but people won't understand. So you're better off not moaning about it because people will go, you're really lucky. You could be working, you know, in a pit or whatever. Well, and you did something quite similar to that. You ended up being in a huge suit, working in a sewage pipe for this oh, book. Oh, yeah, in one of them, <laughs> yeah, in, in, uh, yeah, in the programme. Yeah, in, uh, it was the waste episode, and it's in Mexico where all the drains are open. So soon as you land in sort of Mexico City, that's that's one of the things that hits you first, the noise and the smell, because all the sewers are open. And uh, it's a fella's job to uh, go into the drains and unclog them of all sorts of... I mean, everything you can imagine. He goes down there and has to unblock it. If it weren't for him, the city would just be flooded with mm -hmm. guns. Pro it's proper, you know, it's... It's not just messing about. I'm, I'm looking at topics that... It's a, it is a big problem, isn't it, waste? I mean, uh, what, what do you do with it all? We're creating loads and loads. How, how, how often do you empty your recycling bin? All the time. What, and where's it all go, you see? You forget about don't it, really don't you? Know. Once you've put it in that bin, not my problem anymore. And it was just looking at those things and the rubbish that annoys me. You know, things... I know we need some of it, but there's certain things that annoy me, like, you know, party poppers. Stuff like that, that makes a mess, and you go, what, what was that for? Why, why, why have we just made that mess? You take longer, it sort of takes longer to get the vac out and vac up than it does for that moment of pleasure of just pulling that thing. So it was looking at waste like that as well, the waste that's unnecessary. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to pretend here. When I set off on these journeys, I'm not a paxman. I know I'm not going to solve the world's problems or anything, but one that I went, I'm looking forward to. I think the one I, I look forward to the most, and it probably did turn out to be my favourite trip, was looking at identity, mm -hmm. my identity and stuff, because it's something I've never really thought about. I don't... Um, you know, you see celebrities on who do you think you are, and they find out they had a great, 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 great granddad who sort of hurt his leg once, and they start crying. And I just think... You didn't know him five minutes ago, and you, you're bawling your eyes out. What's, what's wrong with you? And I, I could never understand that, because I, the only people I link myself to, really, are my mum and dad. Anyone past that, it's a bit different time, and I've never thought about my past, the family tree. You know, I don't even talk to people who are alive and are linked to me, so I don't really want to know about people from years ago. Uh, so that's that was my attitude going into it, but then the things we looked at... Um, it was just interesting. Dressing up as a woman was one of them. Dressing up as a woman was in there, yeah. It was a man in um, Newport Beach in uh, that's West Coast America. And he, uh, his name's Rob. Brilliant bloke. If there's one thing that I like about all this, sometimes you meet people who you just get on with and have a nice day out. And he's into um, dressing up as as a woman. But not just like, you know, bra and knickers and that. He's, he's got a full body suit, rubber suit. So you feel, you know, you, when you feel your body, you feel in the body of a woman. And um, he got me one of them suits. 
and put it on and uh it was a weird day do you know <laughs> do you know when you find yourself in a situation you go this i never thought this was going to be happening in my life i used to work as a printer and i'm sort of i'm here now putting on false breasts and a wig and you know a skirt and i had a really good day um why did you have a really good I day? I don't do you know. Think? So I, honestly, I don't. I don't know because I wouldn't have thought that would have been me. But I think his enthusiasm. I think that's what I like. I like meeting people who are really into something that's a little bit weird, but they don't care. It's like they love it. They're not hurting anyone, and they don't care what people think. Because a lot of us just, you know, you do as you're told all the time, don't you? We're all living the same sort of life. You know, these trends, everyone's copying the same way of living. And now and again, you meet these people who do something a bit different. And um, it's what makes life interesting. So I think that rubbed off from him onto me. Um, and, yeah, it was, it's, it's probably one of the best things about the job. Isn't it? There's too much going on in the world, isn't there? And this, you know, you're talking about EU stuff and all that. I'm, I'm just like, am I missing something? I'm sure if I was tested... I'd, someone would say, yeah, you've got... Because everyone's got something wrong with them now, haven't they? I'm sure there'd be some initials for something that's wrong with me. But, um, yeah, I try. That's all, that's all you can do. You sound pretty normal. That sounds like a fairly normal reaction yeah, to those yeah. kind of things, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how intelligent some people are, though. Like, I watch University Challenge and stuff, and I just think, how are they doing that? Where, where have they kept all that stuff? All that knowledge? There's no way, I mean, they say we're all boy, sort of born with the same brain that's capable, but I don't, I don't think we are, are we? I don't know. Mine I... can't keep all that <laughs> stuff in. I don't, I don't, honestly, it amazes me. University Challenge is like a league of its own, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, there's stuff there that, yeah. I think they should be the ones who are answering about the EU. I think, you know, at least they'll <laughs> understand it. Get them in a room, the winners, and just say, right, are we in or out? What, what, what should we do? There's, there's too many food programmes on the telly anyway, isn't there? You can't, that's, I think, probably could blame that for... All oh, the obesity at the minute—you can't turn the telly on without seeing a cake. <laughs> um, so and I you, just did thought, you lose you don't intelligence need that. as well. I did, yeah. That is that true? That story about the ape? Yeah, that was. Um, there was meant to be an episode just all about intelligence. I, I wanted to work out, you know, because uh, I'm not—I'm not the brightest. I'm not the daftest. I don't think you know. I know I did a program called Idiot Abroad, but I don't don't class myself as an idiot. I'd say I'm sort of probably above the middle line of, you know, I'm above average. <laughs> I'm not going to big myself up, but above average. So I just wanted to look at intelligence. Um, and one of the stories that we were going to do was having a game of Pac-Man with an ape in, uh, I think he was in Japan. And, um, yeah, about a week before we were meant to set off, two weeks, I think, um, got a call saying the apes pulled out. And I was like, that's the only thing I was interested in, sort of taking on this challenge. <laughs> and he pulled out, so I said, oh, let's forget that. So we ended up changing the intelligence app to the art episode, which surprised uh, the producers and that, because I, I said I'd like to do one on art. And they were like, what, what do you know about art? And I'm sort of like, well, everyone's got a view on art. I think everyone likes some sort of art. You know, you don't have to be all airy-fairy about it and... Oh, what I'm getting there from the colours is this, that, and the other. You just go, I like that. Um, everything has an effect on you, doesn't it? Build it? I like looking at buildings, me. <laughs> you know, a lot of what I like about London is looking at buildings. I don't really want to go in them and stuff, but just different styles. So, yeah, they, they said, all right, then, do that. So I uh, got involved in a lot of different art and, you know, tried my hand at it. Uh, and then, obviously, wrote about it in the book. A tiny little thing that can happen in life and have that knock-on effect. You know, something really simple, but it's, you know when they talk about the butterfly effect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, it's coming up with something and then making a story out of that little thing. Where can that little thing lead the story? And it's my favourite. I didn't realise how much I liked coming up with stories. And there was a point when I was at school, I only thought about it when I was doing this because someone else asked me, like, where does the storytelling come from? And I remember, I was rubbish at school, but I remember... We used to get given diaries. Yeah. And I think it was a way that... It was a way of teachers keeping an eye on you, really, at, like, what you're up to in the evening. If you went, like, oh, the shoplifting last night or whatever. <laughs> so, so you had this diary, and I, I didn't really go out much. I'd go out on my bike, but yeah. most of the time I'd stay in. And I ended up writing about an old neighbour. 
I had called Mrs. Knowles. Right. And I'd just write about going, oh, I haven't seen her today. Um, she hasn't been out. Uh, hope she's all right. Next day, she's been out again. She's been picking up rubbish and chucking it in the next door's garden <laughs> and all that. And she, uh, she was, like, really into it. Right. There was a point when... Well, the teacher was. The teacher, yeah. She never... She, she thought I was used to everything else. But even when I stopped doing the diary, she used to come up and go, how's, how's Mrs. Mrs. Knowles, Knowles doing? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, in a way, I've always been interested at, like, yeah. looking at other lives. So, I don't know if you've ever had it where you just get frustrated with yourself and what have you. And if, you, if, if in your head you're not happy, it just messes everything up, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, it doesn't matter, friends or whatever, are telling you everything's all right. If in your head you're not happy, it's uh, yeah. It's not good. So it's about that. It's about the relationship with me and and the brain, the inner self. Okay. I think that sort of explains it. Who do you prefer being? What in this? Yeah. Uh, uh, probably, probably the inner self. <laughs> it's probably a bit more me than me. It's complicated, <laughs> isn't it? But um, but I'm I'm all of those things. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a mixture of. We all are, aren't we? I was yeah. talking to someone the other day, and someone asked the same question. And it sort of makes you wonder, like you two now, how much are you being 100% you? Especially when you do telly and a camera's on you. Yeah. If you, do you know what I mean? How much of a bog standard 24 hour day are you allowed to just be you? Everything that's going on in your head, you say. <laughs> you, you don't, do you? <laughs> no, you of, course don't. You, of course you don't. <laughs> so it's kind of, that's what it's about. It's like, who are we, really? Mm. Who are, most of the time we're putting on a, a, like a, a show, aren't we? But I don't, what I don't get with that is, and you'll know on Radio 1, mm -hmm. Lady Gaga. She's walking around in a dress made of meat, wasn't she? <laughs> yep. Yet they call him me an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what annoys me. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't, I, there's nothing that I'd see and I go, oh, I wish I didn't say that or react like that. I uh, think uh, most uh, people Carl's would react. not an idiot. Carl I'm not an not idiot. idiot. I didn't it's do well at school. No, it's all it's, it's more to do with the fact that, that he's got that, that, you know, what you call Little Englander syndrome, where, you know, he packs um, sliced white bread and tea bags when he goes abroad. So that was the sort of gap. Because I'm not into the everything's rosy type of uh, stories. Everything works out in the end, because it doesn't in life. It doesn't. You get on with it, and you look back at stuff and go, well, it wasn't that bad, was it? But it, I don't like um, the sort of... I'm trying to think of the sort of films I'm talking about. Just, just those films where everything's Tied ticked off. Yeah, everyone's happy. It's like it doesn't happen. But that isn't a bad thing either. As long as you learn from your mistake or whatever, you move on. And I, It's weird with me because in, I'd say, my life, a lot of memories that I've got are the bits where it didn't quite work out or it rough time. Yeah. But they're the ones you look at and go, oh, remember that? You know, that struggle. It's a good time, that. That's right. It's sort of, um, you know, close. It's like you're on the edge of this could all turn to shit or it could happen. And you haven't quite got enough money, but you're getting by and you're going, this, this might be it. Because that's the it's adventure, a, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And once you've got it, it's never as good anyway, is it? It's that like is a dream. So, mate, 100%. A dream, you know, it's kind of like, don't, don't achieve your dreams because it won't be as good. And then you've got to think of a new dream because you've got that one. So it, I, I haven't... For me, when I was younger, it was always getting on the radio. That's the one so thing... when you were a kid, you wanted to be well, on the radio? Yeah, well, by about the age of 11. Um, I was rubbish at school, did rubbish at school, but there was always music on in the house. My mum always had the radio on. Brother and sister had music. Um, and after school, I'd sort of draw... I'd, I'd, I'd sit at the top of the stairs, just drawing with Piccadilly Radio on. And uh, in Manchester, mate, and, I had the exact same life. Yeah, I'd sit in my bedroom drawing, yeah, listening to yeah, I was, and maybe, dead, dead maybe Steve Wright on Radio One, right, something right. like that. <laughs> and and that that uh, and I used to hear them, and I like back then radio was different, wasn't it? Now it's all how many songs can we play in an hour? We've got another four coming up non-stop. Keep listening. There. So and true. Adverts. Whereas then it was like local people talking Talk about stuff that at places I knew, and the accents were like mine, and I kind of related to them, and and I liked the way. That is so true. Yeah. We're making this. We don't care whether anyone likes these shows or not. We don't care. We'd rather they enjoyed it. 
of course. But we, we're not interested. We just say, it's not for you then. We don't care about anything. You, you care that some people like it. Well, because you get the chance to make it again. That's the only reason we care. But if any, if anyone says, do you want to make another one, that's all that matters to us. He doesn't want to make another one. Well, you know, going to a third series? No, the, the, I mean, if there's anything- there's I've come up with another else. idea. What is it? Um, it's him and Warwick Davis going round, uh, Carl on a bike with Warwick in the basket. That's all that, 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 and that is the idea, Richard. <laughs> that's as far as it goes. I said, what then? That's a, that's ten seconds of the title the sequence. Where's the bike gonna go? It'd be going around sort of like weird sort of events and festivals of England and, um, they'd just be, it'd, it'd be great. It's like, it's like two fat cooks. Yeah, but, but the difference yeah. is there. The they took it in turns to so cycle on that. Warwick's legs aren't going to reach the thing. It's always going to be me cycling him about. And even though he's small, he's still heavy, you know. Mm. I've had him sat on my lap, which is an odd thing to say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but Ricky sorted it out for him to come in and sit and have a chat with me once. And he's heavy for a little while. Why fella. did he sit on why, uh, <coughs> Weren't there any chairs? Why was he sat on your lap? There wasn't a chair for him, was there? No, there was, only, there was only two. I only ordered two. Right. Oh. Carl, I'm so grateful to, uh, to have you on, so thanks. Thanks ever so much. No, 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 you know, I don't get asked to do that much stuff, to be honest. So it's not really a perk or anything you've got here. It's not, um, but a lot of the time I, I can't be uh, bothered because I feel like I've got nothing to say. In sure. A way. But or it's all been said. But do you not think that, but that uh, authenticity, I think, is why that's, that, I mean, I, I, this is a compliment. I don't want to make you awkward or anything, but uh, I think people love you so much because you are honest. There's no... I mean, we were chatting before. There's no there's no BS, is there, you know? Well, it's easier that way because I just think you get caught out, don't you? Because people remember stuff. Must be exhausting In fact, well. they remember stuff more than I do because that's, that's the one thing that is weird, you know, when... Because, like I said, I've done podcasts and all that, um, talked to, done books written about stuff that's happened in my life or whatever... And people remember it more than I do. Yeah. So they come up and say, oh, I love that thing you talked about. Right there. And, and it's kind of like, what? And it, it's, it's weird. It's really, it's like I've got dementia or something and people are almost like a family member and they're telling me stuff that I've gone through. <laughs> but yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then the more they explain it, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. But to me, it happened to me once or I said it once. And why would you re- why remember would I listen from... back? Or, uh, and it's funny how, you know, people sort of remembered all the detail that I talked about. But to me, it's gone. And I feel like with all the travel stuff and everything that I've done, you know, it's almost like I've done too much in a short space of time. And I can hardly remember any of it. It's like snapshots. All the travel that I've done, there's some people who live a lifetime and sure. don't go to all the places they've been to. So to do it all in the space of like four years, I think I went around the world like two and a half times or something. So <laughs> you kind of have little snapshots, but it's it was all too much for me. I mean, brain can't... I know my brain's not that good, really. When it, There's loads of problems with it. But one of the things is like memories and stuff, really flaky now. So... Um, it is weird. That's I, I, I'll, and I'll never get used to that either. People coming up and how oh, is your uh, you know st- Uncle Stan and all that. Sure, it's like it died ages ago. Yeah, and then they're shocked. It's almost like they're sad about that because I, I should have warned. Sort of. Warned By the way, them before we chat, the following things have happened. Yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah. A little catch up, like one of those things you get before a program previously. <laughs> like a little, but um, but yeah, it, it is. It, it's odd, but my point was there that yeah, you can't you can't really bullshit. And it's better not to. What, what's the point? Totally. What's the point? In terms of that memory thing, you know, there's an American comedian called Jay Moore, and he said he made a movie with Eddie Murphy. Right. And he's a big Eddie Murphy fan, and he said he was quoting Eddie Murphy's material back to him from the earlier, oh, do you remember this on Raw? Do you remember this on Delirious? Do you remember this on... And, it, and he said it was so obvious that Eddie Murphy didn't know what he was talking And he was going, oh, yeah. And then he goes, he goes, of course, because Eddie Murphy's lived that. Why would he still remember stuff yeah, from 1982? I've probably done a lot more since. Yeah. I think that's the thing. You, you can't remember it all. It's just, you know, you sort of move on. And especially on that travel stuff that I did, because it was always a bit of a shock to the system anyway. You know, and if you're dealing with something as a surprise, I think it's like your brain's getting rid of stuff you don't need to remember anymore to deal with what's in front of you now, I think. Yeah. It was all like... I, no, I think that is a thing. I, I, it's hard to explain, but... Y- your brain can only store so much. Yeah. And then I think your brain, from what I understand, 
makes the call. You don't need this anymore. I know. You got you, the stuff that's happening now is more important. But so that's what, annoying, though, isn't it? When it, it remembers, yeah, of it, is. it remembers a bit, but not enough to be useful. Yeah. It's like, well, forget it all, then. Yeah. Don't yeah. bother yeah. remembering that you once. You know that that's what happens on quiz shows and stuff. They sort of have a question, and you you go, I know this, and you and you do. But you don't, and it's kind of like just forget it then. <laughs> just, just it's better off just going. I don't know. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, I mean, yeah, it is crowbarring it in. I suppose the sick of it thing that I've been doing is about that relationship with me and me brain and the way it thinks and stuff like that. But I always felt uh, like it was a, it was a tough thing to switch from. You know, going from like the podcast stuff to the travel stuff to this is quite a big leap and it's been really hard for people to sort of they, they, they were like i'm not expecting that i'm not expecting it to be like that thought it was going to be a bit um bit dafter or you know i want to wear like the stuff from you and it's like well it is from me it's just that um it's kind of my thoughts and worries but put into a little story and it's funny how they, they, they struggle. They, a lot of people who were really into what I do, it was a bit too much for them. They're like, oh, I couldn't get my head around what you were trying to say then. But you've got to do what you want to do. You can't... I could have quite easily just kept doing, you know, radio or podcasts or travel. But there comes a point when you go, I'm, I'm done with that. Totally. And I don't just want to go and go through with it just to take the money. You know, it worked because... What was going on in my head during those travels was what was going on in my head. I wasn't comfortable. But if you keep getting put into situations, you get used to it. There was a point when Bear Grylls probably went, oh, I don't know about drinking my own piss. I don't know if I can do it. Now he loves it. <laughs> and it's not the same, is it? If he was on I'm a Celebrity, he, people wouldn't enjoy watching him. Because no. it's not, he'd no, be going, it's oh, not I a like challenge. This. Yeah, I yeah. like this. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So you've got to sort of know when to go, enough's enough. And I'm going to have a go at something else. And um, maybe some people drop off and go, oh, it's not it's not for me. But I hope that some other people went, well, I didn't like his other stuff, but I like this. But it's quite hard to get people who have made up their mind about you to give you a go Absolutely. on something else. It's yeah. so hard. I said, Carl, do you want to be an extra for a laugh, just, to the, just, for the, just for the Pilkey fans out there? And he went, no. I went, oh, go on. He went, no. I said, it's pork chop catering pork chop he went all right how long will it take i went 20 minutes he went all right so got him a car he came down he had pork chops didn't you yeah good wasn't it yeah and um i said to the makeup people i said make him look as gimp as possible so they put on this awful sort of curly wig gave him a moustache he looked amazing but he was comfortable with it because he was sort of hiding behind it and then just before we shot it we whipped his wig off <laughs> and it was like we'd woken up a baby bird and thrown him out the nest <laughs> he was really it, it it's actually on one of the, the outtakes and it's him i'm, I'm crying with laughter because he's looking around everyone's looking at him and he said this is like a nightmare and so we thought it was funnier with his little bald head and the mustache and it, it worked didn't it but mm. what's interesting <laughs> about that carl is you were comfortable hiding behind a bit of a mask being, yeah. you, yeah. you were comfortable watching yourself as a cartoon on the ricky yeah. show maybe you should do some acting maybe you should pop on a nambas because then that's <laughs> like we've dressed up your genitals as a completely different set of genitals and so it's not your genitals in a way what do you think of that carl yeah, that's a good but point <laughs> good point um five live um the thing is i can't remember words right so like ricky got me to do an advert for one of his stand-up things how long was it 30 seconds mm. i can't remember i'm not got to be an actor you've got to have a good memory if it was that thing where they just go make it up, yeah, I can right. do that. You can't remember 30 seconds. Well, that's what I do. Honestly, it's really hard. my film roles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I just make some on the day. Is that all right? I, I couldn't, I can't do that. It's a tricky bit of, uh... Just, uh, for, just for, Carl, what do you say to those people, um, who say, because of your, um, mental disability, uh, that I am bullying you and, exp uh, and exploiting you? What do you say to those Carl, people? Carl, interesting question, Carl. Mm. Uh, it's been asked a lot, but no one's stepping in, are they? <laughs> No one's helping, are they? <laughs> it's gone on for ten years. They say what goes around comes around. When's it coming round then? When's something gonna happen to him? When's someone gonna squeeze his head? 
What you're saying is, if people are accusing him of bullying, why aren't they actually rather just What are they doing about it? What are they doing about it? Oh, this is bullying. All right. What are you watching it for then? It's ridiculous. Of course, not bullying. We're friends. You know, it did. All these people would rather whinge about it. They've all got the conspiracy theories, but what are we meant to do? Well, yeah, that's what you're talking about, isn't it? You don't know. You're tricky getting a sponsor on that. Like one that what you care hard. about rather so, than well, hearing. I hear other podcasts where they're going, you know, so and so fresh underpants, get them free, buy an order now, get an extra pair, da da da. And you're kind of thinking. Jesus, really selling your soul. I don't need any more craft beer in my life. That, that's the other one, I'm yeah. all right for a website. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, it's all that. It's all so that stuff. So therefore, it just, you just become the norm. And what we kind of, I kind of go, well, we've done this from scratch. I kind of don't want to I've throw suddenly, it all in the bin uh, now and It just depends, on it, if you need it to keep it going and all that, but it's tricky. Well, every little helps, doesn't it? But yeah. There you go, Tesco. Might they could them, come on board, couldn't they? <laughs> Or just something linked to it, though, isn't it? It was cinema or something, or something that you sort of... Yeah. It sits well with it. Or something that people... Just something that people would genuinely use. Go, yeah, I'd, I'd, I need 15% off that. Yeah. But I don't know what... I don't know. Tricky. Do you need anything in your life at the moment? Do I need anything? You don't need that much, do you? It's... For me, it's... Um, I actually enjoy the thinking if I need it. What the, what the time and the space to think? Yeah, but, but like, like recently, there was a case when I was thinking about getting a table tennis table. Why? For fun, just for exercise or yeah, fun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy that bit of, all right, well, I could, I could just go out and buy one. Yeah. But I like that thing of, all right, well, how much are they? I don't have no idea how much they are. All right, well, would I get a cheap... I mean, it's a table. Why, can, why is the price so different? Why is, why is it a really expensive one and a cheap one? All right, we'll go for the middle one. Uh, which one do I want? And I enjoy that, how much do I want it, to the point that I went downstairs, I was going to put it in the garage if I got it, and I went in the garage and just imagined playing table tennis in that space to me, with myself, just like, yeah. you know, getting a sweat on. Just And then I realised I didn't want one. What was the realisation? Just like, I'd get bored of this. I'd get bored quickly. of it. Yeah. And I was thinking, who would have played with? Someone's got to be there. And I was thinking, could I put it against the wall and play? And I, just having all that, I know it sounds mad. No. But, but it's that thing of, I've trialled it. Yeah. And I've worked out, I don't need it. So I'm, there's a lot of people who just go, I want a table tennis table. I'm going to get one order. Oh, I'm not really using it. Put it yeah. over there. And that's that. Yeah. So I don't need, that's what, I do, yeah, the question was, do I need, what do I need? I don't know. Well, I suppose it's always, it's the need or the want. I would say, like to my little lad, you know, he's just learning. No, I want that. Yeah, you want it, like, but you don't. You don't need, need it. it. It's not going to sort of help you out or enrich you or, no. or, or change anything, really. I think it's just nice to know that if you wanted it, you could have it. But how much do you want it? I don't really want it. But it's nice to know you could. You could have the thing. But do you do you think about that as opposed to the table tennis table? With every, everything. With everything. Do you yeah, go through I don't that? rush in. I'm not um, impulsive. God no. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm a bit. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm not good at. Man, you. I'm saying not good at it. I'm saying that's a good thing. I think it's a positive thing because otherwise, you've You're got a table tennis table money, in the yeah, garage next to the dust. bread machine, next to the popcorn maker, next don't to talk, the. Someone gave my wife a bread machine. Of course, either. that's what they do. Said, well, no that, one's ever bought one. No, it's always passing them on. Why do you need it? Do you know where it is? It's just sat on the bottom shelf in the pantry. It's been there for two months. They're gathering quite dust. chunky, them as well, aren't they're they? Fucking massive. They're Prefer keeping a. I could have had loads of bottles of water there or something. Yeah, and it's like God. It's not hard. There's there's twenty four hour shops are open. If you need bread. Yeah. Don't get a loaf. It's not it's not worth the fanning about. And no doubt in a few months that bread maker will be passed on to somebody else. Definitely. And it'll Definitely. probably come full circle. Yeah. And come back to us at some point. And end up back on that shelf collecting yeah. there. So um yeah, I do. I I overthink. I, I drive Suzanne up the wall with just like just get it. Just buy it if you want one. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm I'm enjoying the process of working out if I if I want one. I wouldn't necessarily think personally overthinking things in life is is seen as a, a negative or, or a bad thing at all. I think it's positive. I think it is good. Yeah, I suppose as long as you're not letting it stop what you want to do. Does that ever happen with you, that it stops you or stops somebody else? 
Like you say, uh, Suzanne, does it drive her up the wall? But what would she rather have? A, a, a clutter-free garage or a, a dusty table tennis table? You know what I mean? As an, as an analogy. She just wants me to be happy. And I, yeah? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think. Because the little I know, yeah. I've always, you've always seemed yeah, content and, and happy. I am, but even that, that's a bad word these days, isn't it? What? When you're saying content. People I said content in an interview the other day, because I was. I was, on you. I was genuinely content. I'm, I know, but they say you should want more than that. Why? I don't know, it's just the world we live in, isn't it? It's like, you know, only here for so long and push yourself and all that stuff. Yeah, but by, like, I'm not, by saying you're content doesn't equate to laziness. It's just like, I'm actually really happy, I feel lucky and I'm happy with my lot. Yeah, but like I was saying to you in, in the lift coming here, people, um, it's funny, isn't it? Because a lot of people say you should live in the moment, but in all those interviews I've been doing of late, they're all talking about what you're doing next, what are you doing next. Yeah. It's like, I'm here to talk about the thing I've just done. Yeah. Don't worry about what's next. No, and I that's the thing. That's, it's like, I don't know. I'm not even, I'm not <laughs> hiding anything. I don't know. Yeah. I've just this minute finished this. It's not even been on the telly yet. <laughs> So, can we just, like, talk about this? Yeah. And then if anything comes up in the future, you'll find out, because I'll, I'll be talking you. to you again, won't about, I? About, and, and then you'll no doubt ask me what else but is after this. Yeah, yeah, they will. Yeah. They will. So, I think that's the world we live in. It's just content doesn't fit into that, does it? It's like, you should want more. You know, people... Uh, I don't know, does it mean that you're... You're full of energy and that? It's like, oh, he's doing a lot, he's doing that, now he's doing this, he's doing that. Well, I'm doing nothing. I just want to... Yeah, but that's all right as well to do I've nothing. Done. Well, the other thing with me is I do struggle to know if I'm enjoying the thing that I'm doing. Like now, I don't know if I'm enjoying this. It's, what, it's me, fine. What, me and you talking? Yeah, just, just being here, doing this. Yeah. For me, it's always later on. That, that you'll, you'll think I'll about think it. I'll think about it and go, oh, I enjoy it. And that's everything. It's nothing to do with you. That's like, we went away on holiday about four weeks ago. And when I was there, Suzanne was sort of going, this is good, isn't it? And she was like, oh, mind you, you don't know yet, do you? And she knows that <laughs> when I get home, after it's been and gone, she's like, right, what did you like about it? And I'll go, oh, yeah, that was good. And that was good. But at the time, I'm, I'm waiting for it to go wrong, I think. I'm waiting for something to annoy me. Or something, just something to go wrong on that holiday. So is that a worry in you, it, like in general in life and everything? Yeah. Every right, what about if you're, you, you and Suzanne go out for a meal and you're having a meal and that's an immediate thing, an immediate reaction? If to I'm your away taste on buds. holiday, I'm thinking I don't know this place. Am I going to have the shits in an hour? Right. Okay. So, so everything's. You... I'm always thinking, oh, what if? Like, I can't. I just can't enjoy things. I, I never go. Woo! I've never done that. And that's, you need to be in the moment, don't you? When, you, when you're doing something, <laughs> yeah. you're sort of like, yeah! I, I don't have that, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that relaxed with the moment. Right, what about watching a film? Do you, do you have to, can you enjoy, watch the film and go, I enjoyed that bit, or enjoy, that made me laugh, or is it contemplation after? I think, well, again, I'm thinking about it after, like I said, but I, I quite like that as well. I do like that thing of a couple of days later when you go, do you know in the film when that happened? Yeah. A lot of films you watch and you don't say anything about them. It just happened. No, because loads of rubbish. Go, yeah, so. so you don't care. Yeah. But if it's a good one, there's the, uh, a one I've, I struggle to understand and it keeps, it stays on your mind and then you talk about it a few days later. That's, yeah, there's another example, I suppose. Enjoying, I suppose things that people do that they enjoy in the moment, it's normally mad stuff, isn't it? Like jet skis and stuff. I can't imagine... A little bit, but, like, if I'm eating, a, like, a really nice sandwich, I'm, I'm eating it, I'm going, oh, I'm loving this sandwich, that's tasting really good. I don't... I don't... And I'm, maybe an hour afterwards, I go, yeah, I really love that sandwich, but personally, I won't eat the sandwich and then go, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'm, I will do it in an hour. Do you know what I mean? No, but can you enjoy it? Say, like me, um, if I had a, a... Like, a bacon, lettuce, tomato, some chips... When I'm eating that, a little bit of me is worrying that this is quite a juicy sandwich. I'm going to... And I'm a messy eater. Right. So I'm so busy sort of trying to shove it in without it going down my top or whatever that I'm not f I'm not 100% right. enjoying I, it. I understand. Maybe if someone said to me, how was your sandwich? I'd go, yeah, it was all right, that, yeah. Because I got away with it and I've still got a clean shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know it's annoying. I don't, it's kind of... Um, 
I think just pro- people are programmed differently, aren't they? And some yeah, really and, do live in the moment. But yeah. if that's not how you are, I don't think I can change that. I think that's just how I am. All right, this is Jack speaking. Hope you have a good 2021, sick of 2020. And take care, stay safe.